Mic check. Mic check. One, two. Where there, there. I, need to, I still need to broadcast the Twitter now. that really quick how's everybody doing out there hold on one second uh no I'll cancel that i still don't know what's going on with um twitter let's get right back let's get right into it this morning Give me one quick second here all right here we go uh sorry i'm on an hourly chart right now give me one quick second What do I got to do here? Sorry, I've got some stuff in the background I have to do. Post that. All right. Good morning out there. How's everybody doing? Jimmy Barry, good morning, brother. How are you? Good morning, isn't it? Have a gorgeous squeeze off of the open. This is, the, uh, this is an hourly chart right now. We're going to start looking at the hourly chart here. We had a beautiful squeeze lined up into the close yesterday. Beautiful squeeze. And what happened? The, what was the first thing that happened this morning? Now, this is something to pay attention to. Uh, I'm going to tell you why. I, I tried to put it in the market brief last night. I wrote about it in the market brief, but I wasn't quite able to uh, put it on paper what I was talking about. And we're going to talk about that right now. So let's go over to the uh, trigger full screen here. I talked about it last night, but not, uh, I wasn't able to like draw it out for people. And here's where the important part is. Right here. Well, let me close that really quick. This was yesterday's open. And we had a great open, right? Right there. This is a pre-market of yesterday in S&P 500. So we came up yesterday at <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice still. My voice is like really wrecked right now uh, from all the blabbing that I do on on the show. So just right here, this is pre-market, right? This, I think this was about 9 o'clock. Hold on a second here. Let me close that up. This right here was about 9.15 or that was 8 a.m. right here. As a matter of fact, even this down bar, this was after 9.30, but what is it right here? 9.30. So the key about or a key part of yesterday's morning was we had that big squeeze, right? And we didn't get a new high off this pre previous high. You could you could assign that high to this one right here. 
but we didn't get this one right here. We kind of failed it. You see it? Failed it. And right now, at this moment, this morning, we have a similar situation. You can try to assign this with that right there. But in fact, this is required to be higher than that one right there. It's not good enough. So this open right here, right? Came up here. Bounced all the way up here. That's not good enough. That needed to be right about there. So let's take a look at that really quick. So we got this new one right here, right? This was uh, yesterday. We did not get a new high over here. So <coughs> second morning, this has happened. Happened back here. Happened again right here this morning. And you can see the selling that took place after and also on the hourly trigger. We never want to see a squeeze off the hourly trigger for it to not beat this prior high back here. And you can see that there was a failure up here, right? On the hourly at least. And you can see right now they just blooded this, this whole entire thing down. Now, saying all of that, right? IWM and Q's are extremely bullish. Uh, Q's kind of bullish. They didn't get the new low uh, yesterday. IWM full-on primed uh, yesterday. So when you look at the three indexes as a whole, you can see or you can gain some insight. Is the market truly rolling over uh, or not? Is the market... Uh, going to pull back or correct what's actually taking place market breath indicator if you re remember from this past weekend said uh we're deleveraging s p 500 the question becomes where is that money going is it leaving the market but when you look at uh iwm of a sm or smalls they're not leaving they're rotating what is the end result of that, though? Smalls outperforms. Smalls looks, looks great. But at the same time, you have underperformance in this rotation in S&P 500 and to some extent uh, Qs, not fully Qs. And why is it not fully Qs? Because most of, not most of small caps, but a ton of small caps has, a ton of small caps has what? Spec growth. Right, spec growth is involved in small caps, right? A whole ton of it. Whole ton of uh, small caps is spec growth. And where does spec growth usually lie? In tech. So tech still looks a little bit more bullish than S&P 500. S&P 500, you might be a bear out there saying, well, the market should crash, right? Or the market should go down even if we do rotate. But the truth is you've got XLE, you've got a bunch of other uh, indexes inside of S&P 500 that actually perform well even when we do deleverage it. So you've got money in S&P 500, right? If that money's going somewhere else, the first question is where is it going? Is it exiting the market? The second question is even when we do uh, rotate out of S&P 500, is it everything? Of course not. Watch this right now. We're squeezing right back to the hourly trigger. Look at the viciousness of this. So what do you do in this situation? This is the big question, right? What do I do here? I'm, I'm like, I, I'm watching this price action right now, and I'm assuming there's somebody out there that's like, uh, well, I, I, I talked to Bork the other day, and I go, I talked to Bork the other day, and I go, well, I'm not going to say exactly what I said to Bork, but I said, I said, there's a lot of people that are like, well, I'm this and I'm that, I'm long, I'm short, but they're only saying it after uh, the move, not before, never before. It's always after right now. And so that's a lot of what I'm seeing. People saying, well, I'm this and I'm that, and I'm this and I'm that. And I'm watching this right now, and I'm like, did you know that was going to roll down? Did you know that was going to get rebought? Did you close your, I'm assuming you, 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 like, you sold here, you bought here, you sold there, you bought here, and you sold there, right? Uh, it's probably my assumption. And, th and my, my second assumption would be that you're only stating that fact after the fact. 
Does that make sense? After the fact. Not before. Ham short, ham long, ham short, ham long. And the truth in this, uh, as a matter of fact, the truth of, the truth of the matter is the um, thumbnail that I have this morning is called manipulation. And that's what's happening right now. You're being, or the market is not only being manipulated, but you've got uh, people trying to set the stage for this market. You've got uh, the bond uh, vigilantes came out all last weekend, nonstop. You've got the banks that came out on Sunday and Monday, and they had their own take, right? Then on Monday, Tuesday, uh, I, I posted a, I have to still fix that thing, but I did discuss with you, yesterday I heard the mantra about, uh, yesterday I heard the mantra about um, uh, pension funds that were exiting the market. They only mentioned that one thing. Pension funds. But I already discussed with you on Monday and Sunday the four, four things that are happening. What? Not one, but four. <coughs> and you had what? What money was coming into the market against the pensions leaving the market? There were two. Institutions and retail investments. And I, I, I even assigned to you what GS had said in that note. So you've got people regurgitating uh, things that they're hearing out there, but they're not regurgitating the entire statement that was made by GS. So GS said, well, uh, pension, pension funds are leaving the market. But there, there's more money leaving the market too, right? And there was also Japanese or foreign investments leaving the market as well, right? But then there was money coming into the market. And what was the money that was coming into the market? No one wants to address that, do they? And those, those are two large groups. The first group was banks. Bank money's coming into the market. Institutional investors are just coming into the market. If you know anything about institutional investors, they come into the market late cycle. If you don't know that, um, that market, uh, Hedge Fund Wizards, talks all about it. They're the last people to enter every bull run. They enter late. They stay for anywhere from six to nine months. Uh, they're not going to tell you that either. Well, they do tell. Well, they will tell you that, but only if uh, you're, you know, you're you're a private banker. On public, they're going to tell you all kinds of horror stories. And then you've got retailers that miss the entire run. You've got. And I don't mean like you working at Wendy's. I mean, hey, I've got ten million dollars to burn, and I'm an old uh, what an old boomer. And I was waiting for my dip buy for spring. I do it every year. I buy the S&P 500. I buy Vanguard. They got left behind. They got left behind. If you don't know any of these people, I do. They call me. They talk to me. They text me. These are my family and my friends. These are, these are old men that say, hey, Cap, I thought you said we get a, we get a springtime buy. Where is it? They're out there right now. They want to buy this market. And we're coming into the end of Q1. These guys, they want to put a hedge on the market, right? You have a bank that wants to put a collar on this market. Do you think they want to put a collar on the market at 535? Fuck no. Because what do they have to do in that? We, we close this market tomorrow. And they have to put a hedge on. Where do they want to put that hedge on? 535? Because uh, where, where do they have to put it on? Because they lift their skirt tomorrow, right? That's what they do. They lift their skirt tomorrow. They come in tomorrow and they have to go, whoop, I'm going to lift my skirt up. Is it 5,500, top strike? Is it a 535 for the middle strike, 5,000 for the lower strike? If we close at 535 on, on Thursday? If not, where is that? Where's that top strike? Is it 535? Is it 5,000? Like, where is it? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? So think about that, too, as we head into tomorrow. Think about... I want you to think about like where they want the price at, where their money is, where they want to get paid, 
Right now we're trading 519, right? Notice how wild this price action is here. Just look at it. It's pure insanity, right? I'm going to show you one more thing. Tomorrow's last day of the month, right? Tomorrow's last, think about this. Tomorrow's last day of the month. Last, last day of the quarter. And what is happening here? Big giant squeeze up, right? Woohoo! Come back down. Slam back up. Slam back down. Slam back up. Where do you think they're parking the bus heading into end of quarter? Kind of looks obvious, doesn't it? Let's be honest. What is it looking like? And truthfully, you're probably going to expect, as we head into tomorrow, just a little bit less volatility so they can park the bus. Does that make sense? You all want, like, market crashes. I want north. But in reality, they're, they're wrangling price to come in here to park a bus for the end of the quarter. And what's most fascinating, what, what, what truly is most fascinating is you could even blood this down here and we'd, we'd come into the close tomorrow. In the last five minutes, right before close, they'd go whoop, right up there. Park the bus. We could go up here, whoop, last five minutes, whoop, park the bus. One of the best parts of it, end of the quarter, end of the month, is if I'm upside down on a spread, listen to me closely on this. Let's say I'm upside down, right? I got a spread out there, and I'm upside down. And, on, and I usually get these spreads on uh, the end of month or end of quarter. And I usually also use zeros and fives in these spreads. So I'll use like a zero or a five. And I will date them for the end of the month. Why do I do both those things? If the spread goes against me, this is one more thing that I do. I make sure there's a ton of uh, interest on that strike too. So if you're, if you're ever like trading a spread that, you're like, hey, I want to take a spread that's a month out, or I want to take a spread that's three months out. You can literally go to an options chain and go, hmm, there's 30,000 uh, uh, options taken out on this one strike. Why? Why is it on a zero? Why is it on a five? Why are there so many? And uh, I'll tell you why. You take the spread, and let's say you're losing. As you get closer to that day, and let's say I'm like, oh, I'm upside down on the spread. Guess what happens, though, on the day of the end of the month or the end of the quarter? You'll see price just creep to that number. And you'll actually see it take place, right? Usually, if you're upside down, it's like the last day, last. Oh, it start. I'll be like, oh, I'm down 90% on the spread. Last day or so, I'll get it to like 90% in the money. Last like 10 minutes. It's like creeping up right into, into where that spread should be. 100% trade. So right now, just think about that as we trade this right now. Think about where they want the money to, or where they want the trade to be, where they want the close to be. It's end of quarter. You want to see a crash happen in the market? Not going to happen. It ain't going to happen. You're not getting a crash into end of quarter. I'm going to make a blanket, easy statement for you. You are never getting a, a crash in the end of the quarter. Uh, you might if it was planned. You might if it was unknown news to the market. But this is their market. And you're not going to facilitate that. You think you are, but you're not. They want their shit to print. And they're going to get that fucking print, whether you like it or not. And this looks like wrangling to me. All this price action, all this wild ass shit, uh, nothing fundamentally looking like it's supposed to look, right? So let's look at it right here. We've got buyers here, buyers here, buyers down here, and now buyers up here, right? Supportive, 
flows into the market. No crash. And let's look at this one right here. What are they doing again? They're buying it again right now. Parking the bus. This, none of this looks weird to you? Looks weird to me. Yeah, it's a nice comfy spot, isn't it? Nice comfy spot at 520. Parking the bus. Let's take a look at this right here. Put that one right there. Make that green. This is uh, Tuesday at after 4 p.m. This is the squeeze. So we can, this is after hours right here. So we can clear all this up, clean all this up and come back. Make that bigger so I can read what you guys are saying a little bit. Oh, hold on a second here. All right. Arm got blooded yesterday, right? Bam, all the way straight down. Uh, still holding on, onto its hourly trigger, or its daily trigger, excuse me. There is a problem here with arm. We do not want to see the break of the daily trigger. Right now it's trading uh, 125.21. Even though we don't want to see this break of the daily trigger on arm, we still need some kind of confirmation. This is a 30 minute chart, by the way, on ARM. Uh, you would need to see a rejection down here in the hourly trigger to come down to confirm and get a new low. So I want you to pay attention to ARM on this low below the daily trigger. Currently that price is at what? Let's just draw it in. Uh, 122.89. So we want to see a new low here. We'll draw this in right here. This is arm down below to see if this actually is bearish. If you are a bull, why is that not working? So see this hourly, see this how this hourly trigger is pulling up. See, see, how this, see that hourly trigger right there? It's pulling up. See how it's not following? That's cause for concern for bears, not for bulls. If that hourly trigger was racing down to meat price, I would be concerned. But I'm not. I'm not concerned. So what I'll do is I'll pull this all the way up here. You would need to see a new low right here to get bared up. Like I'm a bear on arm. You would literally need to see Price go up, come down and make a new low right there. And for the hour, hourly trigger to race down with it. Hasn't done that yet, has it? So actually, the hourly trigger is like pulling up now, isn't it? Which is cause for concern for bears that we're going to squeeze higher on arm. So until that happens, uh, we'll pay attention to arm to see what happens with it. We've got Dixie. Dixie looking bullish here, doesn't it? Came back down, held on its hourly trigger. And right back down right now, you should see a pump up on Spooz. But it still looks bullish here, doesn't it? Tesla fighting its way across the daily trigger. Sellers trying their damnedest to keep it down, right? One, two. Uh, but let's take a look at the hourly trigger on Tesla and or the hourly velocity in Tesla and see what we're what we're learning. Let's take a peek right here. You see it? You want to buy Tesla down here, especially when you get series of lower or higher lows on Velo, right? You got another band of of negativity, but it's smaller, isn't it? It's not as big as this one. And what do we know about Tesla? It trades its daily velocity. You always want to be buying down here, always. And you see the weakness in the negative velocity down here. Yesterday on CNBC, what did they say to you? They said, oh, the market's losing velocity. 
I'm like, that's a fucking lie. They don't fuck they're talking about. It's not losing its velocity. You can actually see it here. It's waiting like to grind up and eventually become positive. This is where most of the bulls buy Tesla up here. But Tesla would have turned already when they're buying. So is Tesla turning up or is Tesla turning down is the question. Tesla's turning up. All this noise in here is bullshit. Tesla is turning up to the upside. Price target on Tesla, 209.60 today. I don't think we get there today, but we are going to get there. <coughs> What's something else to pay attention to in Tesla? This right here, triggers. See that turn? Whoop, 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 right back up. Not down on weekly. Turned up on weekly. Right there. It's turning up. Turning up. Tesla looking quite bullish right now. Trying to trade 210. NVDA blooded. Right? Doom, 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 doom. What is not happening here? What NVIDIA? The hourly trigger is not following, is, is it? Look at it. It's not following. It's not running down to meet price. It's staying up. Let's take a look at it down here. Check that out. This is what I always like to check is the hourly velocity on NVDA. Why? Why am I always looking for this? See this green one down here? Why am I lo looking at this one here on a 30-minute basis? Because you want to be buying NVDA on its hourly velo when it's negative. Now, it's still negative right now, but it's going to begin to turn around and go up. Why are we buying NVIDIA down here? Let's take a look and find out why. Negative. Hourly velocity. Negative hourly velocity. Negative hourly velocity. Do you see all these things? All of this stuff down there, uh, down in the bottom left-hand side. Negative hourly, hourly velocity. Negative hourly velocity. Negative hourly velocity. Negative hourly velocity. Another small rip, right? We have a major one down here right now. See it? We have a big one, right? So look how big that one is. So NVDA, where is it going? It's turning up. Say it with me. It's turning up. I know you hate to hear it, but that's truly what's happening. It's turning up. So whatever you, your, negative, your negative thoughts are right now, you have to think the opposite of that. Oh, it's all doom and gloom cap, right? But in reality, there's the run right there, right? Woohoo! Riding flying high. Are you the buyer of NVDA down here? Or are you the buyer of NVDA up here and screaming at me in chat when it rolls? You should be the buyer down here, right? And you got doom and gloom on NVDA right now. Oh, it's all over cap, doom and gloom. Oh, no, it's more, more doom and gloom cap. In reality, you're looking for a way to grab or buy this, buy this, trying to buy all this for that move right there. It sucks being a buyer down here too, doesn't it? Why does it suck being a buyer down there? Do you know why? You know why it sucks to be a buyer down there? Because you're the only one buying. People are screaming at you. Why are you buying down there? Why are you buying down there? You shouldn't be doing that. But you actually should be a buyer down there. When do we when do we go from a buyer to a bottom right hand screen? When do we switch from a buyer to a seller of dips? 
Like sell the rip, buy the dip. We always talk about that, right? Are you a buying are you buying the dips or are you selling the rips? What are you here? This is NVDA. Let's look at it. Are you a buyer of dips or are you a seller of rips? You're a fucking buyer of dips. If you're an old man. What about this move right here? Who is screaming the run is over for NVDA? Everybody. I told you, bro. I told you, bro. Truth is that any pullback, the daily trigger or close to it, that's a pullback. That's this is not a correction for NVDA. Anything above the daily trigger, guess what you are? You are a buyer of dips. When do you become a seller of rips? When do you become a seller of rips? Only underneath the daily trigger with a rejection. So you would need, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to see. You would need to see price get underneath the daily trigger. And you'd be like, well, hey, Cap, am I a seller of rips now? No, you're not. You would then need to see price come up to the daily trigger. And you're watching. Oh, shit, maybe I should buy that. You would also need to see what? You need to see the hourly trigger come down. Not hang out up here. Notice how the hourly didn't follow here. It followed right here, didn't it? But it, notice how it's not following right now. You don't see it following down here, do you? I don't see it. I don't see it following, but you would need to see it follow. And then you would need to see a rejection for a new low right there. If you saw that price action right there, initial break, rejection on the daily trigger, hourly following, right? Failure from buyers underneath the daily trigger, and then a new low right there. Now you might be thinking, well, Cap, I missed all this entire thing. I missed it all, bro. So much money in here, bro. Yeah, well, you fucked up how many times back here? You fucked up like what, 30 times? You got smoked. I don't even fucking believe you're in the market. I'll be honest with you. I don't. So you need to see this action, but here's what gets crazy. You get the new low down here, right? You would still see another rip again, believe it or not. You get the new low, it'd still come up. You get so many opportunities in this market to be wrong, it's not even funny. Especially as a bull, you get a ton. You get a ton of opportunity before it actually happens. And let's look at this right here, just this right here. You're still at the initial buy-in down here. Do you see that? You're still given an opportunity. One, two. But you are told some more information, right? You got the low. You got the new low. Your hourly trigger is down here. You have the opportunity to exit the market in an orderly fashion. This is how... This is how... Um, you as a retailer has have more time than a bank does to exit the market. They're like fat, big, fat elephants. It takes them time to divest the market. While you're panicking on your four shares or 100 shares of NVDA, they have to unload millions of shares. And you're out there screaming about it. We might lose the stream. I might, might lose the stream here in a minute, but I hope, I hope that I don't. The point being is that you have an orderly exit available. 
if you're a bear and you're like, well, I could have made all this money over here, cop, and all that other stuff, right? Truth is, back here, you got fucked up how many times? 30, 40, 50 times. Call the top of NVIDIA fucking 30, 40, 50 times. And if anything, right now, NVIDIA, this is consolidation. It's not distribution. And what this is huge consolidation. Massive. Why? Because it's going way the fuck up there. Now, let's just say it's not. Let's say we're here. And, it, and it's distribution. So even if it is distribution, you're still going to be given the opportunity to actually short it with an advanced warning. And you're actually becoming a seller of rips here. That's where you become a seller of rips. This is where the money is. The money is never here. And you are not a seller of rips until this happens here. Buyer of dips, seller of rips. Be aware of that. It will treat you better. Always treat you better. If you are a buyer of dips and a seller of rips below, seller of rip, seller of rip. Well, what about that cap? Well, I'll show you 20 more times where you lost. You won once. You should be buying the dip. Buying the dip. Buying the dip. So unless price goes below an NVIDIA, what? Below 849 and gets a new low and rejects the daily trigger, you are actually a buyer. Should always be a buyer. GME. Trading $13.06. Needs to be above the hourly trigger. Don't even like it here anymore. Sellers on the weekly trigger at $15.48. Personally, I would not be trading this until you see price action get above $15.48. Consolidate. Same for the, as I said, just talking about this with the bears, right? So if you're a bull, what I would need to see is above the weekly trigger. I would need to see the hourly come up, the daily come up, come down, a confirmation trade, and a new high. Whoop, right there. Come back down, and I would then be a buyer right there. So no buyer as uh, for GME at the moment. IWM. What's IWM doing right now? Ripping fucking faces. Is this indicative of selling the market? Is any of this structure here indicative of selling the market? No. Is it? Squeeze up higher, pull back, consolidate. Did you get a new low over here? Let's see. Did you get a new low? Fuck no, you didn't. Let's look at it even closer. Did you get the new low? No, you didn't. Where's price now? Woof. Woo. And what just happened here? Did you get the new high? Say it with me. Yes, Captain, we did. We got the new high, Captain. Why did you get the new high? Because of rotation, not liquidation, not exiting the market, not 
taking your money out of the fucking stock market. Do you understand me? Like, money's not leaving the market. It's in the stock market. It's just moving. What does this mean right here for S&P 500? What does this mean right here for QQQs? It means that every bear out there that wants to see those indexes burn are going to have their dreams snatched out of their fucking mouths and their hands. Because the small caps is a part of the S&P fucking 500. They're a part of fucking NASDAQ. So though there's weakness in those indexes, they're not ready to crash or liquidate. And IWM is going to hold it up. Small caps is going to hold up the market. Reddit, selling below its hourly trigger. What do we know about Reddit at this point? Big old squeeze, right? Woohoo, making a bunch of money. Trading like a meme stock already, right? Where are known buyers on Reddit? Right down here. When does Reddit become bearish? Below. $45. Otherwise, look for a dip buy. Where's the target for Reddit? $100. Where would you, where, if you wanted to be a buyer of Reddit right now at this moment, what are you looking for to be a buyer? You guys know? Two places, right here? Set, set an alert for yourself. Two places. Or three places, I guess. One right here. Be a buyer right here. Be a buyer down here and be a buyer up here. Where do you become a seller of Reddit? Underneath 45 bucks. You're a seller under $45 on Reddit. Show you that right there. Park in the bus, baby. Hey, I, didn't, I can't really read what you, what you wrote there, John. I'm trying to, but how are you, John? Good morning. Also, a few notes for you, programming notes. I said that I would not be here on Thursday. Uh, I changed my mind. I will be here on Thursday to stream with you due to the volatility in the marketplace. We're going to switch over and look at SPX this morning. We're going to take a quick peek here at uh, gamma, the gamma picture this morning. We are currently below the gamma flip. I'm going to show you guys something here. Last night I put this chart out for you. Let me see if I can mute my camera maybe. Hold on here. I'm going to make some things small here. Bear with me here for a minute just so we can get every, everything here. 
my camera, I'm going to mute that if I can. Frame, mute that too. Okay. So I posted this for you last night on, posted this for you last night. Uh, on the website, right? So it's SPX Gamma. Volatility. Trade the extremes. Gamma Flip has actually moved up this morning. We are below it currently. Look at where the Gamma Flip is right now. Here and here, right? They're trying to sell you down into volatility. When we're down here, what do you expect? Volatility. What do you do below here? You sell the rip. I'm going to show you. I want to show you. I want to visualize for you what this chart means for you as a trader. Local resistance is up here, right? What do bulls need to do to for the market to become supportive for buying the dip? So this local resistance, we need this to go away and push higher, right? Push higher. You want confidence in bulls, right? You got uh, 5350. You got 5400 developing, but no further development up here. Notice how there's no 5500, 5450. Everyone waiting for end of quarter to find out where we go. Good development up there, just not what we really want. We want people buying 5,500. How do you get that gamma to come into the marketplace? How do you get a big fat bar up here at 5,500? How do you get that bar up there? Do you know how? End of quarter. JPM comes out and says, oh, top strike 5,500. At that moment, if, that's, if those strikes come up, you will see people buying those calls. As a matter of fact, if you ask Binky, he'll tell you they already are. Ask Binky. Find Binky out there. He'll tell you. They're already buying 6,000 calls for the end of the year. He scours. The options chain. That gamma doesn't matter right now, but it will down the road. What when we when we with confidence are up here, what happens? <coughs> Excuse me. What happens when price is up here? If you don't have a, a basic understanding of gamma, it's basic. Just basic. What happens up here? Start pushing this up. What happens above this gamma flip? We are supportive. That means dips are expected to be bought. Fairly simple, right? Any pullback will be bought. What else can we expect up here? A little bit slower price action, right? A little bit slower. No craziness. Just buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. Grind higher, grind higher, grind higher, grind higher. That's above the gamma flip. What do you expect in here? What do you expect right here? Some of you out there think market crash and doom. That is not what happens in here. Not what happens. It's the volatility trade. That means big moves. That's what this means. So you've got supportive. You got volatility. And then below that, what do you have? Sell the rip. What is sell the rip? That means if we come down below here and we reject one, to make a new low, what do you switch to down here? You switch to sell the rip. Boom down. 
Consistency, boom down. Consistency, boom down. Consistency, boom down. Not volatility, because what is volatility? Volatility is this. Oh, yeah, bro, it's going down. Oh, yeah, bro, it's going to... Trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. That's what... This is what volatility is. Straight back up. Sell the rip is... Hell, yeah. We're in negative gamma, baby. Let's do it. Does that make sense? Are we there right now? No. Oh, you like them red graphics? <laughs> How does this translate for you? <laughs> How does this translate for you? So I just went over gamma with you. Basic, right? Basic gamma. All you need to know. What does that mean for you? It means expect volatility, right? It means expect uh huge drips higher huge drips down it means you have to wait until we're above what this morning sp specifically it's about uh 52.24 if we get above 52.24 back test it and go higher you will be back in some normal gamma by the dip every single time if we're down in volatility, what are you doing? You're trading the extremes, aren't you? Are we in crash mode? No. Are we in sell the rip? No. <laughs> got my life savings and puts. <laughs> uh, let's look at something else too. I got something else cool for you. Uh, hold on a second. Some, one other cool thing for you here. All right. So this is a cycle chart. You guys get these from me all the time, right? Some of you do. What can we see on this cycle chart? Or what should we see? This looks pretty bearish here, doesn't it? PPOs coming down. PMOs up, down, right? MBI peaked out, came down. What happened here? Market went higher, didn't it? What happened here? It's kind of turning up, isn't it? But what can we what can we divine from this? What can we actually divine from this? We got PPO is coming down, PMO is coming down, MBI coming down, but is price following to the downside? No. No, it's not. It's not following to the downside. You can, you can actually divine stuff from this. Let's see what happens here. Here's an example of price following to the downside here's an example of price actually following to the downside let's look closer underneath right look at that box right there 
doom. Back up. Fuck you. No. Fuck you. No. Boom. And you're like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to recover. What happened here? Fuck you. No. Fuck you. No. Before you even got to this, you could see it, right? Sell it down. Sell it down. We get a correction. Boom. Price following this stuff down here. What happens when that doesn't happen? We don't see follow through in price. Follow through in price. What happens? I'll show you. Here's an example right here. MBI going down, price not following. Where does it resolve? Rip your fucking face off, doesn't it? Rip your fucking face off. How many people were Max puts in here? Everybody. Where are we right now? Look, where are we right now? With all this doom and gloom down here, where are we? We could even go right there, couldn't we? We could even go as low as right down to 515.25. And it still doesn't fucking matter. Why? Where does this resolve to if PPOs are in the bottom, if PMOs are in the bottom, and if fucking MBI is in the bottom? It resolves to a fucking other face ripper to the upside. Where should price be right now on S and P 500 if they were selling the market? Where? It should already be down here. If CTAs and institutions, if hedge funds and pensioners and Fucking foreigners were selling their shit. Price would be down there already. They're rotating. They're partying in IWM. And then when they're done partying there, where are they going to go next? Right fucking here, S&P 500. Right fucking here, QQQ. And they're going to rip this fucker to the moon. So when you're down here looking at this price action in S&P 500, what are you thinking to yourself? Doom and gloom. <laughs> Doom and gloom. Where are we going? Going to the, going to the basement, Cap. <laughs> like, no, we're not. Nothing here says we're going to the basement. Nothing. It's showing you rotation. That's all it's showing. Get yourself a nice low to buy. Get ready to rocket ship up. Where's the target? 535, 550. You don't like this price action? Buy every dip on IWM. <laughs> Go into the living room. <laughs> Just the woodshed. You would already see that. You would have already seen that price action if that was the case. You would see us much lower at this point if that was real. If they really were selling the market, but they're not just, it's just a scam. They're telling you in public that they are, but they aren't. They literally took their millions or their billions and they rolled it into IWM. Why? They're pricing in a rate cut in June. What outperforms in, in, in a rate cut? You guys know? If you don't, it's easy. Open up a chart for small caps. Right? Put IWM up on it. Then I want you to get the Fed funds rate. You can actually search for it on TradingView. Go to the Fed funds rate and look at every time they cut rates, what ramps right before it. Small caps. Every time. Now, does it matter if they cut rates? No. Ask Jimmy Berry. Does it matter? Fuck no. They just trade it. They trade it before. They price it in before. They don't care if there's a rate cut. When you guys are out there saying, why are we selling the news? We've got a rate cut. I don't, I don't should be up. It's like, 
know that it was fucking up for three months leading up into that rate cut. Remember all the doom and gloom right before the last Fed meeting when they kept trapping bulls, trapping bulls, trapping bulls? And we're making market briefs every night going, no, stay long here. Buy this. <coughs> Keep buying it. Well, it looks so bad. I know it looks bad. They're trying to fucking, they don't want you buying it with them. You're a retailer. Get fucked. <laughs> they're going to tell you what they're doing. They're going to lie to you. That's right. It all becomes priced in. They front run the trade. It's the same as the soft landing. Are we in a soft landing? Are we in a soft landing? Are we in a soft landing? Are we getting a soft landing? Uh, you know, soft landing's not guaranteed. You know, there's still risk there. What about that soft landing? You know, we're still at risk of a recession. You know, a recession's still there. What about that soft landing? You know what? I, I can't confirm that there's a soft landing. Well, what, guess what happens? About a year later, a year and a half later, they come back to you, and, and Jerome Powell comes out and says, stop using that soft landing word. And they priced it in the entire fucking way. While you're listening to someone out there tell you that we're not in a soft landing yet, we're not, soft landing's not confirmed, blah, blah, fucking blah, they traded that whole fucking soft landing. And you're waiting for someone out there to tell you you're in a soft landing. Meanwhile, we were already in it. <laughs> they already traded it. <laughs> Tell them, Jimmy. <laughs> Tell them, brother. Stop listening to the people out there telling you what's happening. Start looking at what's really happening. You have to, to survive. I say it a lot. Stay off fucking social media. Stop reading the fucking newspapers. Stop reading Wall Street Journal. Stop, literally, stop reading that shit. Stop, well, we, we, we listen to CNBC here, but I mostly listen to CNBC to laugh at them. You got to laugh at them. You got old, fat, white guys uh, peddling their ohm on TV all day long. While they bitch about poor people. <laughs> One of them goddamn poors out there uh, protesting on the street, they ain't getting paid enough. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta take a break, go on CNBC and beg for my ohm. <laughs> Thanks, Oda. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Goddamn avocado toast eating. <laughs> I'll be right back. I gotta get on. I gotta get on to CNBC and beg. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't really matter if there are. Well, it does. Oh, so Jimmy just said, personally, he thinks that there will be no rate cuts. Sorry, folks. The global market needs rate hikes to tame this transitory inflation. I'm with Jim, you on that, Jimmy. But that. But traders are trading, right? Uh, and we know that, right? It's we talk about, you know, we talk about like the Fed funds rate. We talk or the future Fed, sorry, Fed fu future Fed funds rate. We talk about the dot plot. We get people that come on this show. When I open the chat, people come on the show like, "What about the dot plot?" I'm like, "Fucking dot plot's bullshit." F F Fed future fund rate is bullshit. That's for gambling. That's all it is, gambling. It's not the path. It is not the path. And they're pricing in a rate cut right now on IWM. Why are they pricing in a rate cut on IWM? Because they're fucking gamblers. They don't give a fuck if they're going to cut rates or not. And if they do, guess what they did? They traded like there was going to be a rate cut before we ever got there. Have to be ahead of the curve. Agreed. All right. Let's take a quick break. 
trading 520 right now. Scale out a little bit. Get off a one-minute chart and take a look at what they're doing. They're parking the bus. They're parking the bus. They want their shit to print. You are in their markets. They are not in your market. All right, I'll be right back. Give me like 15 minutes. I got to get some water. My throat is fucking, my throat is literally burning up right now. Look at that IWM up there just killing it right now. Look at it. Look at that IWM up there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. They're selling the market, bro. Yeah, okay. All right, they're selling the market. You keep telling yourself that. This is not price action indicative of selling the market. This here. This is not indicative of selling the market, is it? IWM. Not indicative of selling the market, is it? Is this price action of selling the market? <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to put on CNBC so that you can listen to the bullshit that they spew to you every morning. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Not the best day for semis, but Marvell Tech today. Uh, City opens a positive catalyst watch on the stock. Bullish ahead of the AI event on April 11. Shares already up 20% plus year to date. And today, another five. When we come back, the Japanese yen hitting a 34 year low overnight. More on what that means potentially for the U.S. Treasury market. Watching extreme volatility in some new public companies like Reddit and DJT. The similarities and differences to GameStop and that meme trade from a couple years ago. This is the, uh, meanwhile, the Carnival CEO is with us next. Stay with us. In 1919, activists worldwide urged their governments to create policies to help working mothers. Today, half of public companies in the U.S. offer paid parental leave for primary caregivers, and 49% offer some leave for secondary caregivers, enabling partners to actively share child care responsibilities. Celebrating Women's History Month, I'm Julia Borston.
Carnival, a mover today, reporting a narrower than expected loss per share in Q1, with revenue coming in just under the consensus. The company also commenting on disruption stemming from yesterday's bridge collapse in Baltimore, which is a big U.S. port for Carnival Cruises, forecasting an impact of up to $10 million on both adjusted EBITDA and net income for 2024. Let's bring in Carnival CEO Josh Weinstein to discuss all of this. Josh, welcome back. Good to have you. Hi, Sarah. Nice to, nice to be with you. It, so you, it's good you were able to quantify for investors the, the impact here, but can you just spell out a little bit more about how the, the bridge collapse will affect your, your operations, how much you've got going on in that port, how easy it is to reroute? Sure, sure. Well, uh, first and foremost, uh, our sympathy goes out to those who lost their lives and their loved ones, and they're in our, our hearts and our prayers. Uh, with respect to our operations, uh, the, the good news from that perspective is um, we're going to be able to proceed pretty much without a beat. We can shift our home port operation for the one ship that we've got there year-round from Baltimore to Norfolk. But really, that's temporary. We can't wait to get back to Baltimore. That is a longstanding home of ours. And we do know that uh, the president yesterday talked about how important it was to all the, the United States to get that channel cleared and that port open so we're ready willing and able to uh to go back as soon as we can so you have two ships that that sail yeah. out of the baltimore cruise port we basically right. have one ship all year the ship switches uh between the year but it's basically one ship uh over the course of the year got on it on an ongoing basis so so you're able to to reroute that pretty easily what about um just, just while we're on the topic of supply, and I definitely want to ask about earnings, but I am curious about security concerns in the Red Sea and whether that's had an impact or has died down. Uh, well, it certainly had an impact on, on our outlook uh, from December. As a matter of fact, uh, we quantified it for people today, uh, probably about $130 million impact on the business. The good news from our perspective is two things. Number one, our business is so strong versus what our expectations were in December that we were able to cover the impact of that and more and raise our revenue uh, and full year guidance. The other is our ships are mobile. Uh, and so we have the ability to adjust and, and reroute. And so rather than taking our ships through the Red Sea to get back from world cruises, repositioning cruises, we have other alternatives and we can lean into that. And that's a real strength of, of our company and the industry. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the raised guidance, despite some of these disruptions and challenges you're dealing with. Any sign of, of slowing demand or just continues to power, power ahead? You know, you probably think I'm a broken record, Sarah, because I've been doing this <laughs> several quarters in a row, and it's another quarter of record yields, record per diems, record bookings. So, again, the bookings part is not about today. It's about tomorrow, and we have no signs of slowdown. We just entered 2024, the highest booked in our history, and we just took another quarter of record bookings that goes out beyond 2024 into 2025. So as stellar as this year is going to be, not only in the ticket, but onboard spending, we see even more strength as we look forward. It has not slowed down. People understand the value of cruising, the experiences that you get on cruising versus the price and experience of land-based alternatives, it's not even close, and people really recognize that. So, Josh, then what goes through your mind when you hear from companies that are largely in the packaged food, the restaurant business, that refer to a stretched consumer? Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, sure, it does. I mean, you know, I go to the grocery store, I see what people are faced with, but this is one of the strengths of the industry, again, because we are a value play, we can stack up against other alternatives. And if people are really stretched, they will still take their vacations. And when they want their dollar or their euro or their pound to go further, and they really line up a cruise versus another alternative, they will get so much more experience for their money that that means we can hold price, maybe even take it up over time in times that are troubling because mm. of that gap to land. What is the gap? What, sh what should the discount be? For, for crews, how do you quantify the value, and, and how do you how do you adjust pricing given the, the demand that you have right now to keep that? Well, a lot of questions there. So <laughs> let, let me start by saying we should have a premium to land, right? That is the bottom line because of what we offer. Now, uh, you know, I, Goldman Sachs did a uh, did a study a couple of weeks ago. They came out and they said the value the the price differential between cruise and land somewhere around thirty percent. 
Now, that's a huge amount of headroom for us to continue to raise pricing and make improvement and still be of value to land. And I, I tell you what, I'd love to use it as a sword and a shield, so I'd be happy with that approach. We can, we can close that gap and still be of value. It's kind of ironic, Josh, when you think about the fact that just a few years ago, we went through this period of traumatic concern about virus transmission, really, where you, where you would ostensibly want to be somewhere like land, and, and yet it's almost turned the industry upside down. I just wonder if there are protocols that have made those concerns go away, or is, is business being done any differently now than it was pre-COVID? I imagine it has. Well, I, I think we continue to just get better at everything we do. I think also people understand the pause in our cruise operations happened and COVID move on. We weren't the cause, uh, we weren't the source. Uh, we have great operations, safety, health, environment, and security. Those are our top priorities and our guests know that. Uh, and so as soon as we got over the myths of that, people leaned once more into what we have to offer and we've got records. We, you know, we carried over 12 million guests last year. We have more newcomers in the first quarter of this year, 30% more new to cruise this quarter than just a year ago. So the word is out, people are sailing and they're loving it. So they're booking more. Are they spending as much on board cruises? Uh, they're spending more. Uh, so w when, we, when we updated our guidance just this morning, we talked about the fact that the onboard spend profile over an incredibly strong 2023 is higher. So, so we're not seeing concerns. As a matter of fact, it's the opposite. We're seeing strength in the two things that are the most applicable to us having the pulse on what the consumer is thinking, which is the immediate onboard spending and the amount that they are doing in bookings for the future. Josh, if all this is true, why isn't the industry getting even more aggressive on, on new capacity and putting pedal to the metal? Well, from my perspective, new ships are great, but improving demand and putting it onto the supply that we have allows us to raise pricing. So we have a growth plan that will give us moderate growth over the next five, 10 years. But the key thing for us as a company is our profile over the next five years is the lowest on record. And what that does is it gives us the opportunity to use all the cash generation that we've got inherent in our business and pay down debt. Because our capital structure, priority number one, is strengthen the balance sheet, reduce our debt, get back to investment grade credit ratings so that we can withstand whatever comes our way. But you, do, you did recently order two new ships, right? One, one order placed more recently. T talk uh, yeah, a little so bit about how you're thinking through that and, and where it's being yeah. made, where they're being sure. assembled. Sure. So our order book, you know, we've got one more new build coming this year for Cunard, the fourth queen, first in 14 years. We've got only one ship in 25, none in 26. And then we just placed an order for two Carnival Cruise Line ships, America's Cruise Line. They truly do need that capacity growth because they are, they are bursting at the seams. But I'll tell you, it's all in the context of what I've been laying out for almost two years now, which is moderate capacity growth. One to two ships a year. Mm -hmm. We're going to funnel that and allocate our capital to the brands that are truly outperforming and need that capacity to really drive further. Uh, and as far as where they're made, it's Europe. It's in Germany, it's in Italy, it's in Finland, it's in France. Those are the, those are the master craftsmen. You get more aggressive on, uh, on marketing or is, is demand uh, and pricing so strong that you don't need to do as much? Uh, well, we're, we're being consistent to what we said. Uh, we haven't changed our marketing plans for 2024. We were significantly underinvested pre-pause. Uh, and what we have done is simply normalized. And by doing that, I think we've given our brands uh, a real chance to shine and show how world-class they are in their markets. Finally, Josh, what's the state of the, the Chinese cruising market and, and how fast it's been able to come back online given some of the COVID restrictions and the weaker economic growth than expected? Sure, you know, China as a, as a cruise market really has been the last uh, to, to restart. Uh, they are restarting. They're actually opening up to international cruise companies uh, probably just about a month from now. Uh, and we encourage that. We think that's great for the industry. Uh, we, uh, Carnival Corporation, we've pivoted and we've moved our tonnage and moved our assets to other places and other brands, as a matter of fact, within our portfolio. So um, we have no plans to go back to China at this point. We're going to watch. We're going to wait. We're going to observe. And, and if opportunity is there and we think it's the right thing in the future, uh, we'll participate. But right now, um, you know, we're, we're having trouble satisfying the demand outside of China. And that's where we're focused. 
All right, Josh, thank you so much for all the color. By the way, the stock has erased all of its losses now through that interview. Uh, very <laughs> bullish sounding, Josh Weinstein, CEO of Carnival. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Thanks, Carl. Take care. Time for the story abroad. European markets closing the day mixed as the upward momentum seems to be taking a break. Investors watching some bullish data with EU economic sentiment moving higher. Manufacturing and retail were bright spots while construction remained weak. But the overseas story today has to be the Japanese yen falling to a 34-year low against the U.S. dollar. The greenback dollar now up more than 7 percent against the yen this quarter, its best quarter since Q2 of 2023. Today, Japan's finance minister saying, quote, we are watching market moves with a high sense of urgency. We will take bold measures against excessive moves without ruling out any options. Threatening intervention there. The Nikkei did end the day higher by nearly 1 percent. Remember, the BOJ ended eight years of negative interest rates just last week, aiming to now fight the inflation or at least get out of the accommodative space since they're seeing inflation. And I think now the currency market is on guard for some for some move from the Bank of Japan to step in. They've done a number of interventions in the past. Some have been more successful than others. But so far, the threatening of it appears to be yeah. working right now. Yeah, 152 is a big number. Uh, meantime, a couple hours into the trade, tech definitely not leading today. Let's get post to post with Bob Pisani. Hey, Bob. Uh, still on the upside, remember we have a day and a half left at the end of the quarter to comment a lot about what's going on on the quarter. I just want to show you some momentum names here. First, signs of life in the IPO market. Uh, Reddit's taking a pause today. It's had a great, remember, price $38 uh, five days ago, went as high as 74 yesterday. It's been very volatile here. Remember, Reddit, Trump Media, GameStop, they're the high retail base. That's the thing they have in common. Retail investors tend to be less interested in maybe fundamentals and more interested in uh, the emotions around owning the company. But a great run and a good sign for the IPO community uh, down today. There's been some great momentum with industrial names. It, the uh, advanced decline line has been very strong in the S&P 500. Another new high. I've been mentioning some of these big industrials. Textron, remember. So this is very good name. You're talking about uh, Beechcraft and Cessna and Bell Helicopters. This is an historic high. It's had a great run. March has been very good for industrials in general. Uh, this is up about, oh, 20 percent or so so far this year. Another group, it's starting to look a little tired. Energy has been a real leader in this quarter. So here's Marathon Oil. So Ma Marathon Oil uh, is the exploration of production company as opposed to Marathon Petroleum. That uh, is the, the company that does the refining here. So the important thing is oil has been creeping up this month. It was 77 earlier. Now it's 82 or so. That's been the big mover here. Uh, 24. Now look here, 27. So you're up 12 percent. Uh, in a month or so here. That's certainly a good sign. Uh, same thing with, uh, and they had very good earnings at the end of February. Marathon Petroleum, this is the refiner now. The refiners have been great. Uh, Valero's been great here. Uh, Marathon was, what, 175 or so at the start of the month, 196. That, those are big moves here uh, for these companies. Uh, but you see it's down. They're starting to run out of steam. But given the move, that's not surprisingly. Here's another big EMP producer, Conoco. Uh, uh, what was it, 110 or 111 in early? March, something around that. Look, now 125. That's been strong. So there's a group that's had a great month and is starting to run out of steam. Banks have been mostly sideways on the month. There's a few small breakouts, though. Citigroup, look, all of a sudden here, Citigroup up the whole bunch of the last several days. Uh, we got a new two-year high now. It was, I don't know, I forget, 54 or 55 at the start of the month, now 61. This is a bit of an anomaly uh, in the banking groups. Most of the, particularly regional banks, have been all sideways for the last couple months. Sarah will have a lot more to say about end of the quarter movement uh, in the next day or so. Back to you. Well, yeah, they've been doing that restructuring, going through their, their final period here of layoffs. Thank you very much, right. Bob Pisani. Time now for a news update. Pippa Stevens has that for us. Hi, Pippa. Hey, Sarah. Hunter Biden is expected to ask a judge to dismiss the tax charges against him filed last year. The president's son plans to argue the case is politically motivated. He alleged prosecutors caved to pressure from Republican lawmakers who launched an impeachment inquiry into his father after a plea deal fell through. Biden is accused of scheming to avoid paying $1.4 million in taxes. The Maryland State Senate is drafting an emergency bill to provide income for the roughly 15,000 workers at the Port of Baltimore. The port is closed indefinitely right now following Tuesday's morning's collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's an important hub for auto cargo and coal exports. 
And seven of the country's largest gaming companies are joining forces to promote responsible play and share information about problem gamblers. The members, which include FanDuel, DraftKings, and Fanatics, account for 85% of the online betting market in the U.S. They will create an independent database that will allow them to share key information related to consumer protection. Carl? Yeah, but thanks so much. I mean, when we come back, uh, several Tesla price targets to get to this morning. Uh, Can Accord lowering its delivery estimates, but they say the negative sentiment around the name may be overdone for now. The analyst behind that call is going to join us next. A trial. Bull call from Evercore this morning on Western Digital initiating an outperform on the name saying the stock is quote uniquely positioned to deliver on earnings and also become a less complicated growth story following the split of its hard disk drive and NAND memory businesses. Price target there up to 80 stock lower today but still at its highest level since January 2022.
Meantime, turning to Tesla this morning, some bearish sentiment this week at City, at Bernstein, at Redburn, all cut their price targets on the name. Mizuho downgraded to neutral, but Canaccord Genuity says it's not that bad, calling the negativity surrounding Tesla right now extreme. Joining us this morning, Canaccord Genuity Managing Director, Georgia Dianginakrikas. Georgia, it's good to have you. Welcome back. Um, we have seen a lot of numbers get cut. Uh, Redburn today suggested maybe flat to negative deliveries this year. Uh, why can't it get suppressed below 170? Look, uh, thank you for having me on. We went through multiple geographies during the quarter, try to discern how bad demand was, how good demand was, and clearly things aren't perfect for Tesla. There's some weakness in China in March. But I think the one thing people have to appreciate is that much of the potential weakness in deliveries this quarter has to do with supply constraints. They've had some issues with making a new updated Model 3 in Fremont. And don't forget that the Cybertruck isn't fully ramped yet. We assume that maybe they'll make 5,000 and deliver 5,000 in Q1. And they have the capacity to deliver over 60,000 a quarter. So things aren't that bad. And actually, if you add those things back, it should result in year-over-year -year growth. So it's not perfect. But we don't think it's as bad as people think it is. Are you a fan of the theory, and some have written this, that the price cuts have actually worked a bit? Well, look, uh, interesting question. They cut prices a lot last year, and clearly it helped volumes and it's helping this year. But what's interesting, what we put in our note today, is that the price cuts haven't been there so far this quarter. I mean, maybe a little bit here uh, in China and in South Korea. But overwhelmingly, the tone has shifted dramatically in price cuts. This year, I'm sorry, this quarter in the U.S., they actually increased prices four times with another one due on April 1st. And some people have speculated that maybe to induce uh, demand to get people to hurry to the, uh, to the website and buy a car today. But I think it's more than that. I think we should hopefully we'll see that result in margin improvement throughout 2024. But also it may indicate that things might not be as bad as people think. What's happening with your China estimates, though, after Musk complained last quarter about the, the competition and the subsidies from competitors? It's a great question. So, look, in China, if you combine, we have data that comes out every week. Uh, it's publicly available. If you combine January and February, because there's some changes in the timing of the new year, we're actually up year over year. Where we think the weakness was is probably in March. We had three weeks of reports. Uh, we got one yesterday, and those were down year over year. So there seems to be some slippage. And some competitors in China, Neo and Li Auto, actually pre-announced negative over the last couple of days. So China's not great. But again, they, uh, they operate in multiple geographies. And there has been you know, some pockets of goodness, whether it's you know, European numbers were good for the first two months. U.S. is probably not that bad. And we think that demand for this new Model 3 is actually really good. It's just that they haven't been able to make as many as they hoped. I know for Q1 uh, deliveries, you're looking at, you lowered to 420K, right? Yes, correct. You think, this, you think the street's gotten conservative enough that next week might actually be all right? Yeah, look, it's hard to discern exactly where the whisper is, but probably in the four, low, low 400 range, below the 420. And, you know, we think that's the over-under. You know, if, if it's over that, we think the stock goes up. And again, what we try to do a little bit is reframe, reframe the debate. It's a little bit of supply in there, too. We, we estimate about 95,000 units if they were in full capacity at the Cybertruck, full capacity of the new Model 3, and maybe 10,000 units out of Europe due to some fires at Giga Berlin. All right. And I think you've still got a two-handle on full-year deliveries, which not everybody does. Finally, do you see a lot of political risk if there's a change in the administration? Yeah, I mean, look, they do, uh, those EV subsidies do help uh, Tesla. You know, we think that the majority of people who buy a Tesla today are, are uh, being helped by a $7,500 tax credit. That could change. You know, we'll see if there's a new administration, and uh, there's clearly some risk to that. But, you know, we think that over time, that the inevitable shift to uh, EVs is going to happen, and Tesla will be a leader. So there may be some bumpiness, but if you look, there'll be a little, a little duration. Uh, they should be a winner long term. Yeah, and this charging partnership getting some write-ups today as well. George, it's a really, really interesting story right now. Appreciate your help. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Up next, meme-like volatility returning to some parts of the market. We're going to look at the moves in names like Reddit and Trump Media when Money Movers returns.
There might be a new meme stock on the block. Shares of Trump Media, DJT, up 40% in the first day of trading, surging again today. Our Deirdre Bosa taking a look at the new wave of meme stocks in today's tech check. Morning, Deirdre. Good morning. That's right. So this new class has arrived. We don't know how long it's going to last, but the most divorced from fundamentals has got to be by long shot DJT. Trump Media and Technology Group closed yesterday at a market cap of nearly $8 billion. It's up another nearly 20% today. There's newly public Reddit as well, up nearly 70% from its IPO price, but volatile as mean stocks are down 12% today. But as a whole, those two stocks really underscore a market that is increasingly driven by momentum and retail investors. Like the last meme stock wave of 2021, though, buyers beware. Reddit's price to sales multiple is now higher than that of other more profitable social media names, Meta, Snap, Pinterest. And at the same time, it hasn't gotten so out of hand that it has surpassed NVIDIA, which I'm just showing here as a benchmark for a momentum stock that is driven by fundamentals, not calling it a meme stock by any means. Now look at what happens when you add DJT to the mix. This is a very unique meme stock. So this next screen, you're seeing that it has just $3.4 million in sales for the first nine months of the year, giving it a price to sales multiple of more than 2,000 times. So that obviously blows the others out of the water, even NVIDIA, and you can barely even see them in this chart. That's how <laughs> kind of divorced from reality it has become. As the saying goes, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So do just want to show you what happened to the former meme boom and bust. There's GameStop, of course, probably the most famous. At its height, it had a market cap of more than $20 billion. Today, that's less than $5 billion. BlackBerry hit some $14 billion at its peak, has fallen to less than $2 billion. Bed, Bath & Beyond in 2021 saw a market cap of nearly $6.5 billion. Today, zero. It is in bankruptcy. Now, the other very important lesson from that era, though, is that it is extremely risky to bet against stocks with this kind of momentum. Investors can and have gotten short squeezed. So even though the fundamentals behind DJT do not back up that valuation, it can keep going up. Even on the Wall Street Bets subreddit, users are poking fun at its rise. One writing, pump and trump. Another comment reads, there are Waffle House locations with more revenue in a month than Truth Social had in an entire year. Still, though, guys, it moves higher, especially as some previously buzzy trades, they begin to look a little bit tired. This may be connected. Take NVIDIA. It's up some 80% this year. We know that well. But with GTC, its big conference behind us, and no clear catalysts in the near future, retail investors, they might start shifting their attention to these new hype stocks. They could keep going higher, guys. Um, but like we said, it's very, very difficult to call the top here when it all turns around. D, what's the history like of trying to short names like this? I know you said it's usually or can be punitive. S3's got some data on just how expensive it would be uh, to carry a short. Yeah, exactly. I was looking at that S3 data as well. And this is, you know, just as important as it is to highlight the fact that these valuations are divorced from fundamentals. Just because they are doesn't mean that you can make money off them. SPAC short sellers lost nearly $160 million on paper in 2024. And now DJT is the most expensive U.S. stock to bet against. Let me give you some other stats. Over $100 million of short interest, according to S3 data. And, you know, it, 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 there's loyalty behind these names. And that can last for a very long time. I know I gave you the examples from the last boom and bust. But before that bust happened, some short sellers were caught, caught flat-footed. Yeah, hard to find a good analog that has quite this mix of characteristics. Uh, pretty fascinating, D, uh, and, and a good gut check on, on the name after these gains. When we come back, uh, the results from the exclusive CNBC survey uh, shed some light on the future of corporate tax rates when we're back in two.
Exit.com. Americans are split on what should happen to the corporate tax rate. A new CNBC survey revealing exactly where they stand. Our senior economics reporter Steve Leisman has those results. Hey, Steve. Hey, Carl, yeah, this is an issue not talked about much yet in the campaign, but it's sure to be debated, and investors need to watch closely the battle over the corporate tax rate that the election could play a decisive role in figuring out. President Biden, he wants to ratchet up the tax rate to 28 percent, where it was before President Trump lowered it in 2017 to 21 percent. So what do folks think? The CNBC All-America Economic Survey showing 43 percent of the public want to keep it at 21 percent or even go lower. 45 percent want to restore it to 28 percent or go higher. So the polls got a 3.1 percent plus or minus margin of error. That makes the issue a dead heat. A breakdown shows a little more intensity for higher corporate taxes. A plurality want to keep it at 21 percent, but 24 percent want to go higher. That includes especially young voters and the most liberal voters, which, of course, there's some overlap. Um, while just 14 percent, you can see there on the left side of your screen, they want to go lower. They're the most conservative voters offering more support to cutting below 21 percent. But there isn't much popular support yet for it. There have been some articles suggesting that candidate Trump may want to cut below 21 percent, but no public statement. The Trump campaign did not respond to a query from CNBC on the issue. Here's the party breakdown, though. 78 percent of Democrats and just 15 percent of Republicans want the corporate tax at 28 percent or higher. 15 percent of Democrats and 74 percent of Republicans, they want it 21 or lower. It looks like a mirror image. So where are the independents? There they are, coming right up at you. Independents lean a bit towards the Democratic side, preferring that 28% margin or higher by a 50, by 45 to 36% margin. President Biden has proposed that 28% corporate tax in the budget, but, you know, not likely to go anywhere in this Congress. How this settles out is going to be determined both by the presidential election and, of course, guys, which party controls Congress in November? Carl? Indeed, Stephen. Then you had that Times piece earlier in the week that argued that the president has actually been a net cutter of taxes so far in his term. Yeah. It's just how he wants to do it, Carl. If you, I'm sure you read the piece. It shows that he's very specific about how he wants to do it, using these corporate taxes much more as public policy for specific issues rather than broadly across the board. It would be very interesting because this is a thing that, you know, the President Trump is very much a populist. But unclear how lower corporate taxes, even lower than 21 percent, will play with lower income Americans and blue collar Americans. Uh, th there's uh, indication in our poll that lower income Americans do not support a tax rate below 21 percent for corporations. Well, another related question, Steve, is how do Americans feel about the ballooning debt and deficits and, and the fact that our tr fiscal trajectory is is not great because no politician wants to run on you know, it's, it's hard for them to do austerity, but at the same time, we have this big problem. So we asked about the importance of the deficit in our poll. It actually ranks pretty, pretty low, Sarah. Um, let's see. Out of, uh, how many issues here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's about the twelfth of thirteen issues when we ask people what are the top one or two issues. Inflation is the top. Health care is number two the needs of the middle class, number three. But the federal deficit, Sarah, is not part of the discussion right now or the buzz, and you're going to take a coin from your next segment here, of what's yeah. going on. Not that it couldn't be, and also I think as your question suggests, Sarah, not that it shouldn't be. Right. But, but it shows you where it is on the list there on priorities. Thanks, Steve. Steve Leisman. Sure. Well, let's do the buzz now because the street continues to buzz about Disney. We're now just one week out from the annual meeting and, of course, the big proxy vote. Bob Iger getting plenty of support from the likes of Jamie Dimon, his banker, George Lucas, top shareholder. Although last night, Nelson Peltz and Tryon got some slight momentum with an endorsement from another advisory firm called Egan Jones. Not as sort of not the same influence as maybe Glass Lewis and ISS, which split ISS backed Peltz, Glass Lewis backed Disney. Um, but just another one in the in the Peltz camp with Egan Jones for those reading those reports. And we'll see. We haven't heard much on the institutional side of which way no, it's going to go. And for all the back and forth, THR with a tough piece today titled uh, Iger's era of invincibility is over, uh, that the board's really going to take a firmer stand uh, during this second run. And that it was a good article. Yeah. And it got into some of the woke stuff, too, which hasn't really entered the proxy yeah. vote, but is part of the discussion. Quarter in tomorrow. Let's get to the judge.
All right, Carl, thanks so much. Welcome to the Halftime Report. I'm Scott Wapner, front and center this hour. The rally, soon to be five months and counting. The debate now, how long can it last? We'll ask the Investment Committee that key question. Joining me for the hour today, Joe Terranova, Kerry Firestone, Surat Sethi, and Steve Weiss. Let's check the markets because we're green. We are green uh, today, except for the NASDAQ. It's a modest loser. A lot of talk, Joe, about whether the rally's momentum is waning as this quarter, month, and, you know, comes to an end. Uh, our delivering alpha investor survey from CNBC. Do you think the market has run too far too fast? Two thirds say yes. We're in for a pullback. That's what they think. Do you? I think everyone thinks that we've run too far too fast. I was in a Morgan Stanley complex yesterday and all the financial advisors were talking about, well, when's the correction ultimately going to be coming? So if everyone's expecting and wanting a correction, guess what? The correction's not coming is an expression never sell a quiet market this is a remarkably quiet market and if you want to buy insurance scott go right ahead and do it it's awfully cheap enough the vix is down at 13. so um, I, I wouldn't stand in front of what appears to be a very strong bullish trend so carrie piper sandler today says cool the engines a five to ten percent pullback could be coming investors aren't betting on that right we've been talking about money continuing to flow into stocks Barclays today says a cash deployment is underway. The broadening is going to follow, quote, an expected upcoming central bank easing cycle means there should be scope for equity flows to pick up and performance breadth to widen. They make the conclusion that if you put those two things together, the rally continues. Are they right or wrong? Well, it's continuing today. Uh, and what they're talking about might be Oh, I don't know, three months from now, is the rally continuing? I, I would say that the rally is going to go through a period of time where we're going to have these rate cuts, and the market wants rate cuts. Hey, That's did you, did you vote in this survey, by the way? Yeah. Did, you did vote in the, in the Delivering Alpha survey? I did. So don't, don't ask me what I, I voted I, I'm for. Gonna, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you right now. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to do? Do you think the market has run too far too fast? Yes or no? I think vote? the market has run very far, perhaps too fast, but that doesn't mean I think it's going to go down yet. I mean, it's up 27 percent since the middle of October. Okay. Right, the, the S&P. But if we're going to have those rate, rate cuts, and that's what determines whether people want to buy more stock, then you're going to get buying. What you need for the market to, to stop going up is some catalyst, such as NVIDIA reports a quarter that people don't like. There's going to be something significant that people start selling, and they haven't seen that yet, and they're unlikely to see that for a few months. Surat, were you in the 61 percent or the 39 percent? Because I know you voted, too. I did vote. We're all coming clean on it. Wow. Why is everybody so cagey? No, I'm not cagey. I did vote. I, I did say it's run too fast. But I, what I like about this rally is that it's broadening. I mean, today, the S&P is up, but Nasdaq's down. So you are seeing money flowing into commodities. You're seeing money flowing into energy, into health care. So all the other sectors are now getting capital. And that's healthy for the market. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean the FAB 7 are still going to go where they, you know, to the, to the northeast, but I do think there's opportunity there. And if we get a pullback, it'll, it'll be natural. And who knows what causes it? I mean, the whole 27% was because the Fed actually said, hey, we're going to stop. But if the Fed ever said we might raise again, there goes your, you know. So I think you just have to understand where you're investing and, and, and be in the right places. You got lucky. I didn't ask you directly. I'm asking you right now. Now I'm asking everybody. I, I, I always get. I'm going to ask the guys when I came in, how'd you vote? 39%. 39. And I want the market's going to keep moving higher. Correct. And I want to be clear on something before you ask Steve. I only voted once. I think Steve voted <laughs> more than once. <laughs> How'd you vote? <laughs> are we, are, are we, are we Just for, twice? Are you part of the two thirds that they think we're in for a pullback or, or not? I didn't vote, but I'll give you my answer now. <laughs> so I, I survived. You know what, people? <laughs> I've got to be honest with Let's you. Let's move on. That some, is, of other, some of us have actually that is to do. Extraordinarily so, yeah, well, Some of us do, but yeah. what do you do? Oh, yeah. yeah, I could have lied about it like the other three. I feel <laughs> Oh, I voted. He knows we voted. Did it. I feel stupid. I should have known that, uh, you, wouldn't have, that you wouldn't have voted. Yeah. Oh, if only because they asked you to vote, you probably didn't turn your vote in. Uh, actually, How would you have voted? How would you have voted? I voted. It's gone too far too fast, but uh, it doesn't, I don't know what to do with that information in terms of portfolio management. Sure, there are some positions that, you know, may be overvalued, may have gotten too big, such as, you know, I have a few of those, 
that you cut back from portfolio management. But I don't think it means you exit positions that still have good fundamental underpinnings and the price may be slightly ahead of the fundamentals from time standpoint. So yeah, I mean, look, these market moves aren't natural to have this kind of movement in such a compressed period of time. But I'll tell you what, if you take a look to, to Surratt's point, and it's not just today, you take a look at yeah. some, of the, some of the aerospace names, defense names, like Transdyne, TTG, or, or Textron, or, um, you know, or Lidos, they've all outperformed the NASDAQ and the S&P. I mean, they were up 20%. So that's the real outperformance that we've seen the other names. So if you keep focusing on the mega caps and say it's going too far too fast, I think those stocks may have gone too far too fast, and I own them, but I'm not doing anything about well, it because the fundamentals are there. People who voted in the survey that this is the top sectors for 2024 will be number one, almost two thirds tech. So yeah. we may think, some of you may think that that sector's moved too far too fast. Uh, obviously, people aren't willing to give up the ship yet, um, and they think that this is the place to be, that the trend is obvious, and that it's not going to reverse in a meaningful way anytime soon. Well, I, I'm hoping that we're including comm services in, in that tech 61%. Well, I, don't we, I think we are. because, uh, yeah, and, then, I, and I think we are. When we, yeah. when we ask the next question, where do you stand on investing in AI? Well, they say it's best to do it through the queues. That was the winner. Yeah. So you go broad. But then the second one was buy NVIDIA. Because I, so, I, I actually, mean, we know we know what, what stocks sort of fluctuate between the two, Meta, comm services. Yeah, we'll, we'll I, I, I like comm services. I, th I think comm services is where you want to focus on. But financials. Absolutely, without question, financials are having very strong performance year to date, and it's represented once again today. If you look at J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Citi, they're all rallying significantly. I think this is a good environment for financials because they're under-owned, and I think that's so critical. I don't think people pay attention enough to what is positioning in a particular sector, and there's a lot of room to rebuild long positions in financials. So we're not surprised that the, that that almost two-thirds said tech, are we? No. At this no. point? Well, I was wondering whether, you know, the performance this month where tech is number six in terms of performance was the exception or the new rule, that you think that the broadening is going to continue, tech's going to take a little bit of a back seat for a bit, and these other sectors are going to run. I don't think the broad investing audience necessarily agrees with that. I, I think Joe's right. I mean, you're going to get this broadening. We're getting it. I, I think you're, you're fine to own tech, but there are other stocks that have earnings momentum as well and other sectors. And financials, to your point, I was going to say is, look, what has happened since last year? Asset prices have all gone up. What do what these J.P. Morgan, Morgan Stanley, how do they make money? Wealth management. Capital markets opening up slowly, but opening up. So that all drops to the bottom line. Great balance sheets, dividends, and we're about a year away from when we had the blowups of the regional banks. And you still have a little hair on that, but I think there's opportunity there. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that I don't think I said tech for the, that answer, but technology is such a big part of the market now, it's hard to bet against it if you think that the market is going higher because that represents a lot of the S&P. I mean, you've also noticed, you know, anytime there's been some significant dips in these stocks, mm -hmm. it really hasn't taken long for buyers to come in. No because I think broadly people would agree with you. And, and speaking about AI and technology, Altimeter's Brad Gerstner, he counts NVIDIA, as you know, as one of his top holdings, along with Microsoft and Meta. He is with us exclusively today. And we're gonna get to his latest market thoughts in a moment. I know you wanna hear from him on that. First though, as you probably know as well from his appearances here, he's been on quite a mission to make sure the next generation is able to take part in this country's upside, including AI and these transformative technologies. He's mentioned a program called Invest America on the show before, but his big idea has taken a very big leap forward with the naming of a CEO. Just a heads up here, want to check in with you. So I've got some calls here. Uh, this little green box right here uh, is kind of a stop. Like where I got stops, like right about there. Of CEOs. This could reverse to the downside. So the one, my one fear here is that. Scott, it's a great day. My one fear is that we reverse, get underneath here, and then we have a, a liquidation break, and then the actual move was right there. If that's the case and that does happen, I'm going to look for a better strike. I said DCA, but in truth. Of compounding, but we can fix uh, I would get out of the trade that I'm in on 521s and likely buy like 520 or 519, something like that. So I'm going to monitor this and see if we continue to move higher. You might be asking why I'm buying those. 
we're starting to turn, but not quite yet. I mean, think about this. There's still some risk here. Let me get rid of this so you can see this better. Uh, hold on, let me go to the trigger screen. We're ready to roll. We're excited about Invest America. We'll contribute to those accounts. Mute this really quick. There are hundreds. We're not quite there yet. I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little early. So like, but you can see the one minute is turning. It's not quite there yet. The uh, five minutes should go underneath. We should something like this and then up. Um, but we're, I'm early. I already know that I'm early. Like I shouldn't be taking this trade. And and to be honest with you, the safest trade here is higher like you want to see this action happen you want to see that happen squeeze up there and the better trade for a bull is like in here so i just want you to know that because i'm taking this trade here uh that's quite risky uh you can lose a lot of money uh, so just be careful if you have a small account or something like that if you're not like if you're trading like 0.001 percent of your account or something you want to take the lotto have at it but if you're like trading your paycheck or something on this trade this is not for you your trade is up here uh, a lot of risk down here and the other thing too is if you are on that trade or anything like that just snap a little bar for yourself down here this shouldn't be green by the way this should be like yeah red or something and if you do get stopped out you know how to trade it right if you get the, if you get stopped out down here boom they blood it comes back up before they roll it down uh take it take an orderly exit over here uh so if you, you like your, your stops aren't actually here you execute up here um but just be careful of it because there's some danger and there's also danger down here of the gap close this green box is the gap close by the way uh if you don't know that already this is the gap that was left behind you can see it on spx and i drew this one in earlier because the, at any point down here here we're up here this can happen um so let me see if i can draw that for you make it simpler or simp say it sim more simply to you so you should already know most of this stuff we trade here like this all the time but you get the turn right here you get the turn right there right and then you get the price action happening poop, right here and you're kind of expecting this break above and what hap will happen is they'll boom, drop it straight down, right? Boom, right back up again. And it takes your stops, you're pissed off, and the, the actual dip buy was down here. So just be, and that could happen right now, it could happen later on. Just be aware of it, that it's there. Um, and what your plan is, right? Do I, do I cut my losses here and then DCA down here? The other thing to be careful of is when they do this shit, when they do this stuff, right? They'll be like murdering 521 to, to be paying 520, 519, stuff like that. Just be aware of it. Sorry here. I'm, I'm trying, I'm like, hold on a second. I'm like losing my voice and all that shit. Um, so just be aware of it and uh, have, a, have a plan for if it goes the wrong way against you. Uh, where, to take the, where to take the L, where to DCA, look higher, like 519 instead of 521, 519, 518, 520. Um, Right now they're cheap. They're like pretty cheap calls. So we'll see what's going on, and I'll uh, we'll monitor this as the day moves on. Oh, by the way, uh, I see someone's talking about the uh, JPM collar. Uh, let's talk about the JPM collar. So, uh, what about the, what about the JPM collar? So, I've posted a bunch about it on the uh, website. I want to know from you guys, what do you guys think about the, the JPM call? I want to know your opinion. I already gave my opinion on it. Um, so I want to know what your thoughts are on the JPM caller. You tell me. Tell me in the chat so I can read it. Yeah, John, you know what I did? So, John, because of our, um, because of our new, like, we've got a new bot system. I had to remove everybody from YouTube and Twitch and start over. I will throw him back on there for you. Let me know what you think about the JPM caller. Uh, I want to know what your opinion is. You guys already got my opinion.
damn my throat is fucking You know, uh, are they able to take out 20%, maybe more? Maybe you turn over all responsibility to manage the account at that point in time. I happen to favor an idea where you could take out, a, you know, 10% more at 30, 10% more at 40, and then at 50, you get the entire account. But the most important thing is that we get this in the hands of kids. They open up their phone. They see that they own a small slice of Apple, of Tesla, of United Healthcare, etc. This guy's they're pumping stocks to kids. 500. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a game changer when they're learning about financial literacy, compounding, ownership, capitalism, etc. Um, and so we're really excited. This is another major step forward. It's a demonstration um, that to, of, of two important things. Number one, companies will contribute to these accounts, and that's a huge accelerant. This, the 401k accounts in this country is $75 billion a year. Right. If we just contribute three and a half billion dollars a year to these kids account, it will double the amount. The fuck is this guy talking about? The second thing is it's very bipartisan. Um, you know, it's very bipartisan. Yeah, this guy's welcome, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in an environment where things are very polarized. But we have, uh, as I said, leading Republicans and Democrats who are excited about this. Um, and we can reinvigorate uh, the belief in free market capitalism. Less than half of kids or half of people under the age of 40 according to Pew and Gallup, believe in free market capitalism. We need to- This fucking guy is not pushing. Why isn't he pushing a fucking savings account to these kids? Why is he pumping a fucking our, uh, our index? Recent, uh, marketing campaign and uh, you keep working it and you keep us up to date. All right? Will do, will do, right. Scott. Fuck Let's that guy. If we could now he needs a fucking the, uh, dildo in his mouth. To the S&P 500, uh, among other things. Can we you need our kids financial literate. Yes, we do. Yet another solid month for stocks, a great quarter, obviously. What Let's get him on Robin Hood. How about no? Well, you know, you and I talked when I was on last time. I said this year was going to be different than last year. Last year, we started the year, everybody was ultra negative. Remember, I mean, you can teach your kids this stuff, but you shouldn't be on fucking CNBC. To share, and Meta was talking about this shit to come up about kids get your head around how recently that occurred. Everybody hated those names. Um, so we were very aggressively positioned at the beginning of 2023. How about to have your kid buy Vanguard or buy S&P 500? How about that? 80% for the year. We thought this year would be a more- Say something like that. Don't say, I mean, I don't know, whatever. Returns. And a lot of those returns have occurred in the first quarter <laughs> or the first four months of the year. Um, but if you look at the, the multiples, you know, Google trading at 90. Yeah, how about that too, right? Exactly. How about a money market yield account? NVIDIA trading at 31. How about long duration bonds? I mean, like, what the fuck is with this guy? You have to get your forward <laughs> forecast right. So we continue to own, uh, you know, those names in our portfolio and others that I'm happy to dive into. So, you know, I think some would suggest as they look at, you know, valuations, multiples, and they say, well, just because we're not at historical peaks, that doesn't necessarily mean we're not overvalued. And a lot of these stocks have run a lot, right? I mean, NVIDIA, you know, the multiple certainly has come in as the outlook. Yeah, well, that, you know what? That's a good point. I'll, you know what? NFD just said something that is a good point. In their wildest dream. Yeah, you could actually put your money in a... How would in a I actually was just talking to a buddy about this. You really have to think about I was like, you know, how we got here. I was like, if you look at, like, if you look at the, like bonds, you're making like five and a half, five and a quarter, something like that. It's still not better than just putting your money in like, I think it doesn't even Weeble offer like five and a half percent or six percent. And there's no limitations on how much money you take out like a money market account. Like a lot of money market accounts, you get like what? You can like withdraw money, what, like six times or some shit like that a month or three times a month or six times a year. I don't remember, but. Now it's going to grow this year at a hundred percent. And like, put your money in a Robinhood account. You can take it out whenever you want. Grows at twenty percent. Give you a goddamn credit card or debit card, don't they? Grows at ten percent. We happen to think it's going to grow faster for longer, and the reason for that. Yeah, that's the that's the key point, right? You got no withdrawal limits. None. Dressing is bigger than currently in street estimates, and we think that their share of that is going to be larger. Last week, I was at GTC where they announced the Blackwell generation, and we do our own bottoms-up research. We see what companies are ordering. We see what hyperscalers are ordering. We see what the sovereigns are ordering, and it's large. Um, and we think they extended their lead with the Blackwell generation. 
Jensen is firing on all cylinders. And so we think it's, you know, really trading below 31 times, but it's trading at 31 times street. So to me, is that bubble territory? I don't think so. Well, he's got all the words, doesn't he? Early, early we know what sovereigns are doing. Shift. This phase shift is hard. The street. To, hard to forecast. Um, but we think certainly through 25 and into 26, the demand's going to be greater than currently is expected. I had somebody tell me yesterday regarding NVIDIA the reason why they <laughs> did not like it right here was while they would agree <laughs> with the fact that, yes, they have this, you know. I don't think he's a dummy. I just think he's slick. Just a lead. <laughs> That's all I think. <laughs> necessarily, and others are coming. <laughs> Right. You can see slick a mile away. That's slick. Obviously, you're <laughs> trying to chase what NVIDIA has already been able to monetize in, in many respects. Uh, <laughs> do you buy into that story at all, or do you believe they have something more powerful than some would like to uh, believe? Well, you know, I'm on the board of a company called Cerebris that is another competitor in the chip space that, uh, you know, is building... They're only give me a fucking two pennies right now. I'm only up two pennies on that trade. I bought it at 19, it's trading uh, 21 right now. You know, doing their own things. Amazon and Microsoft... Yeah, it's slick, right? You can hear it, right? A lot, a lot of slick a lot of slick talk. A lot of... NVIDIA is in a dominant position, and I think with Blackwell, they are extending their lead. Everybody would give me like two fucking pennies for this shit. Bullshit. That. Two pennies. That's what you're giving me so far. Come on now. One supplier. But the truth of the matter is NVIDIA took down its pricing on the Blackwell generation. And I think Jensen described it. He wanted to make it a super valuable even for those who have the thinnest margins, which means it's an extraordinary value to people who are using it for things like medical research, et cetera. So I think- You might want to take the money there. I'm looking for this move here. I think the market is growing super fast. Of course, there will be workloads that get peeled off. I want that trade. All this right here is what I want, but do what you want to do in here. They could reverse it down on us. That's two Be careful. Or three years away in our estimations. You can also get this action might happen here, right? Right in here. Bam, bam, bam. With NVIDIA and with Jensen. These folks are not asleep. They're already working on two generations ahead. So it's catching up with a runner that is a mile ahead. I will be pissed if they drop it below 19 cents in here. Let's talk about I bought that fucker down here, so. News of late that, you know, Mustafa Suleiman is going to run. He's going to be their CEO of their AI uh, program. You, of course, introduced him to us, and we interviewed him when we were out in San Francisco last year and certainly remember that. Um, what do you make of that appointment? What does it mean to you as a shareholder in that company and what, what he could you know, potentially deliver for them? Yeah, Microsoft's another great example, Scott. It's trading at 30, 13 times or 30 times. Uh, next year's $14 a share, growing at 15%. And Sacha is firing on all cylinders. There were a lot of people, because they own 49% of OpenAI, a lot of people thought they're hardwired to OpenAI. They'll never have other models. Instead, they pull in Llama, they pull in Mistral, and now with the hiring of the 75 employees out of inflection, they now have the capability to build uh, you know, upon their own proprietary models. And importantly, remember what inflection was doing. They had built a consumer chatbot called Pi, personal intelligence. Now, trying to think to myself competed with chat gpt competed will i be at like 30 cents like take money on 30 here all the other challengers in the consumer chatbot space and so i expect I, I i read sacha's tweet just like you did when he announced the hiring of mustafa who, who's terrific that he said we're excited to have mustafa i got a sell order in now for 30 cents pilot efforts 521. So what you ought to read there is not only that they're diversifying the models that they're going to be able to deliver to their enterprises, but they're going to be for real in the consumer game. They're going to spend real money on it. They know this is a trillion dollar prize uh, to, to, to go compete with Google and others on this. And I think there's a big step forward for them. The other gentleman you introduced us to during that program last year out in San Francisco was Sridhar Ramaswamy, who just was named the CEO of Snowflake. Come on, man. I'm fucking one strike out of the fucking money. Make it fucking two. Yeah, what are you doing? Edge of, uh, Pay me. An AI at that moment, but thank you again for that. Um, so you're a big shareholder in Snowflake. They dropped a bad report recently. They, sure they announced their management shakeup, and I know you weren't happy with, with, with that result that they had. So what does that mean for where your position is today? What'd you do to it, if anything, after that stock went down a bunch? 
Yeah, one, one thing I want to point out here, Scott, you and I have talked about this many times over the last five years. Um, you know, 13 Fs come out. Trading 22 on, on right now. And people look at the 13 Fs. And if you look at our nominal exposure in our 13 F, you would say, oh, Snowflake's like a 40% position. Um, but, you know, you have people on the set there. They know from a portfolio management perspective that would be an unwise thing to do. So just to be clear, to start the year, it's a single digit position. Uh, for, uh, for for altimeter, but you're right. We were disappointed in how they transitioned from Frank to Shridhar. We thought that could have been explained better. It could have been done over a period of months. But make no mistake about it, we love Shridhar, right? We were pushing for that acquisition of Neva over a year ago. Shridhar is an extraordinary talent. Um, you know, you can read just the remarks on LinkedIn and Twitter about about Shridhar. Uh, you know, legendary uh, you know skill set at Google. Uh, and then just, you know, it's really a product engineering led transition. Um, and this is a company that is in. Every time I hear people talk like this, all I think about is accumulation and distribution. To evolve uh, to meet the world of AI. Every time. Most important things about. I mean, I like fundamentals. Over it's good to have good fundamentals. We had this question. I like good fundamentals, but it has nothing to do with the fucking price of anything. Microsoft to do their AI because they had the open AI model. And I think the one thing we can say with certainty today is that the AI workloads are going to the data. So the 10,000 customers are in Snowflake, they're gonna run their AI and their, uh, those workloads on Snowflake. The customers of Databricks will do it on Databricks, of AWS will do it there, and Microsoft will do it there. It turns out that the data really does have the gravity. And I think with Shridhar... Uh, Arm trying to work its way back across the daily trigger at 126.82. Conservative guidance. We'll find out how conservative it was when they report Q1. Mm -hmm. But my sense is when you bring in a new CEO, you, you, you set the guidance appropriately conservative so they get off to a good start. Our expectation is they're going to grow a lot faster than that guidance suggests this year. But like I said, we're going to... Grade 23 now, up four. What you know is this. Um, that, you know, Frank is a legend, absolutely. Couldn't have been more thrilled to help bring him in years ago. He deserves all of the... Uh, I'm going to try to take 30 on this. But they are not stepping backwards with Shridhar. Shridhar, as Frank said, is an incredible product-led CEO and the right person for the right moment at Snowflake. All right, so let's do this. Let's take a quick break as we watch Snowflake shares uh, rise a bit because I want to talk to you about TikTok, uh, obviously, given the position you've had in ByteDance. And then you have two new buys that I want to go through as well. Maybe all that's old is new again. We'll, we'll tease it that way. We'll talk to you after this break. Brad Gerstner of Altimeter comes back with us next. Yeah, you see the pump on snow? <laughs> Everything's pumping, though, right now. We got most stuff right now pumping. Take a peek at NVDA. NVDA at 900 bucks, trying to trade 931. We could get a giant fucking rip here coming. GME is looking like it wants to rip some faces off for a little bit. NVDA looks like it wants to rip some faces off. IWM about to blast to the fucking moon right now, trying to trade 208. Everything's pretty bulled up right now. Be, uh, if you're a bear, just watch out. Trading 24. 25. Need five more pennies here. Reddit, uh, looks like they're buying this on Reddit. If you're a Reddit trader, uh, they're trying to buy Reddit right where we are right now at 57.30, trying to trade 61.92. Trading 26 right now. Up seven. I'm looking for 30 if we can get up there. 
trading 27. 28. Give me two more fucking pennies. I, this shit happened to me a lot, like a few days ago. A few days ago, I was in a fucking call trade. I was up like 27 on 19 or 20 cents, too. And then I got it rolled down and got it took a fucking L for 7 cents. The new Texas immigration law that would give local police the power to arrest migrants. It just feels like the same shit. Continues. <laughs> Texas could ask <laughs> I think I bought it for 20 cents or something and then I may have, I think I even DCA a little bit and then I got fucking torched I, didn't, I should have taken the money run for re-election this year potentially creating 28 right now baby the swing district the second congressional district would be two more pennies Concord currently leans 29 just two points though according to the cook political report and the first mega million one more penny of 2024 was one right here in new jersey last night the 1.13 billion dollar jackpot is the fifth largest prize in the lottery's history while 13 players across nine states did match all five white balls for the one one more fucking green bar push it up there it was the first time the mega millions jackpot was one fucking bears man uh -oh. <laughs> Scott, was it you fucking bears this is what i'm watching that right there this one right I'm trying to sell this right here i don't think it's anybody that we know in this building darn it <laughs> i love my job and everything <laughs> right there i want to see us get just above that red box all right we're back with altimeter capital's founder and ceo brad gerstner so we have some new buys to get to from the committee too but i want to get to watch out for a reversal at this box possible you were really thank you for the free money appreciate it you watch out of something like this and then something like that up there and you were I'm flat that, right now by the way Sundar Pichai was the right person to lead this company after they nice the great mind. fucking trade right there well, look at that fucking that beauty right there me. fuck yeah baby I mean with Scott Beckett a woohoo if you're still in that trade congratulations so, uh, as you remember I'm now printing 33 cents we sold it around 120 dollars last year because we were <laughs> they announced um, you know, their, their intentions in AI. Now, don't worry. Because we were frustrated. Don't worry. We're going to forget all about that trade, and we're going to harp on the ones that I lose. <laughs> As we saw it, to get fit in the way we'll spend a lot of time on the losers, not on the winners. <laughs> and then, you know, listen, I, I, I say it everywhere on your show, on, on Twitter. I'm going to try to get back in this trade if it reverses. The matter is, so if we get any kind of like a rejection up here and come back down, I'll take another trade right there. The structural changes they needed to make. And the stock went down and reflected that as recently as, uh, you know, two weeks ago is at 130 bucks a share. And that's when we started adding to the position again. And what got me back in the stock is for the first time, Sundar, in apologizing about the launch of Gemini and Philip Schindler, both came. There's another squeeze here, too. We're on the right here. That's key. This company needs I should make this yellow, not red. It has a whole heap of competition coming at it, like we just talked about with Microsoft, chat GPT search that's coming out, etc. And they need to be on their A game. I do think that the wheels are starting to turn. There's your next target. Structural change there. Um, but this is still a smallish position for Altimeter. Um, and we will continue to speak the truth as we see it. Obviously, this is a company that is super capable. next target right there resources search is not going away tomorrow and an important part of our decision. We did some research around what SGE what's known as generative re uh, search is doing on Google and if you look at their generative search results compare them to the traditional search results. What you'll see is there are a lot more ads showing up on generative search results so it's no surprise to me if you put ads above it well, another trade right in here somewhere it, the answers are also going to monetize in a way competitive with tradition it might run away from me it might just keep going up big butt here is mm -hmm. i might get left behind but that's where i want to buy right right in here put all those ads around it all right if chat gpt search doesn't have all those ads around it if, if Microsoft or, and Meta AI don't put ads all yeah, over. Yeah, IWM's fucking blasting. There goes my IWM rant. It may, in fact, monetize. How about rest. fuck you if you're a bear? No stuff. I would put it in the bucket <laughs> of a trade that we hope to turn into a. IWM carrying the entire market right now. Remember, you're being told publicly I'm, I'm lucky everybody that the fucking market's going to crash, and here's fucking IWM just destroying worlds right now. 
Brad Gerson. Remember, you're being told. I, I think that there has been, and it's interesting. Remember, you're being told that they're leaving the market. Well, I think technically you need to own some puts against. <laughs> that is the. That is what everybody's telling you, and, and look what's happening right here. Look at that. Boom. Gone. Fall concurrent with that negative news. Market's going to crash. The stock. Same bullshit talk. Right price point. I think people are beginning to rebuild positions. I like that. IWM's like, fuck you, we ain't going nowhere. In my portfolio, so I'm happy that it's moving higher, but I think it's. No, the money is not leaving the stock market. In 2024, that is ultimately going to outperform. It just moved. Right? <laughs> Google is a stock that was selling at a discount to the market multiple. Um, everyone was... IWM ripping faces off right now, trading 208.26. Next target, 208.52. And they dominate search. There's no reason to believe that they can't maintain their dominance. Outperform IWM. ...in the world in terms of revenue. And they have Go on Twitter. It, it just was, you know, gang up. And ask everybody that's a bear out there, say, if they are divesting themselves in the market, why the fuck is IWM going up? ...about his meta stock, because that's one that we've owned all the way from, you know, the time it was mm -hmm. in the high 80s, 90, and it became our biggest position by quite a lot, and we felt that we needed to trim a little bit, and I'm wondering how he feels about that. Brad, why don't you answer that? <laughs> uh, well, the first thing I would say is I don't think dominance in search of Google <laughs> translates into dominance in consumer. Yeah, but we're talking out outperform. Later. Outperform. Listen. If you look at the three indexes as a whole and not just spy, it's at 22 times earnings. You can see that uh but I think they're out cues are great. Um I think they're uh, not outperform though. Uh, outperform you know, what people don't small caps is this is a founder led business they're all still in their late 30s um you know i call them in animal mode it remember is too that's being done over there they've you know covid really remember covid around we also got an outperform by small caps as well in that trade probably saw on twitter you know zuck uh, posted a picture last night of he and jensen together um, you know, we know that they're one of the largest consumers of H100s and presumably of Blackwell chips here in the. <laughs> yeah, future. Gets there did do well, didn't he? The next generation of open models. I'm thrilled. <laughs> That's why the IWM is up. Oh, man. It's going to be oh. the open source model. And they have the place that you can apply. <laughs> because 10 year. Oh, model. man. It's making, you know. There it is right there. Rate Instagram cut fever. That's what it is. Better. And there are huge monetization upsides. It's actually rate cut fever. Talked about. And then finally, what same reason why it got, gets you know, blooded every time. Right no rate cuts. TikTok gets banned by the U.S. government. That's what it really is. Rate cut fever, baby. The largest beneficiary in the world, according to my kids, will be Meta, <laughs> because I ask all these youngsters, what are they going to do um, if TikTok gets banned? And warning. Give me a snap answer and that s p 500 battling right now for positive gamma today between reels and TikTok, it's it's very very high so it'll be a pretty seamless transition oh. i think out of TikTok. And interesting the hourly trigger is right on positive gamma uh, who consume all of this content how are you gaming the whole TikTok saga out shocker to make sure you're you're still an owner in bite dance correct we're definitely we're definitely investors. I've been an investor in ByteDance for almost a decade. When it was a little Chinese company called Totiao, a news feed in China. You know, let me be clear. I'm I'm an American first, and I'm a dad. Um, and so, you know, if I think that this company is violating the rules of laws in the United States and unwilling to uh, comply with the rule of law, then it should be banned. Um, you know, I just think the only the, the only tension I have in this argument is that I want to be better than China. I actually want to give companies due process and rule, follow our own rule of law in terms of how that process unfolds. But clearly, um, the this one right here, pass this piece of legislation. So this one right here, the hourly trigger, baby. It looks like at the moment the Senate is going to slow roll this and consider their own legislation. But let's play this out. If they say that below the hourly trigger to the daily trigger is volatility, below the daily trigger is what? But maybe the Chinese government blocks real it. true negative gamma. Blocks it, then it will get banned. If it gets banned, that'll be beneficial to Meta. But let's put in context what banning it means to ByteDance. Over 90% of ByteDance's revenues occur outside the United States. Come on, give me a give me a fucking dip buy down here. Of their profits occur 
outside the United States. Give me a little dip by. Give me, a, give me, give me, give me, come, come on down, come on down. Let me buy some more calls. Hong Kong exchange. Come on down. US. This is not Come on down here. You know, to buy some calls. But it does. Don't leave me behind. You know, America. Don't leave me behind. I'm down here. I don't use it, you know, to consume. Don't make me chase. But my kids do, and I don't ban it, uh, you, you know, for them. Although some of my, many of my friends have made the case to me that I should. So that's my view. Yeah, where's uh, here's GME, baby. A reasonably high They're still trying to sell you down. Look at that. They tried to sell you down right here in this hourly trigger. That means there's a reasonably high probability that this. GME trying to fight its way back. Fortunate, but I'm also a realist. Um, and if that happens, I suspect the company. <laughs> I need some banjo, don't I? More banjo cap. IPO, uh, without TikTok US, and that a lot of those users or all those users will move over to uh, Instagram. Look at IWM just pumping right now. And some of those Ooh. users will go Ooh. to YouTube Shorts, which will be good for business. everybody. Long small caps here. For you about another Chinese tech company. I, I do, Brad, and I'm a big believer that investing in e-commerce outside of the US is. A tremendous opportunity. <laughs> uh, we have ownership of. I just want a dip by, dude. <laughs> Come on down. China was the area. Come on down. Oh, Give us some money down here. I'm over here. Let me buy all this. Come on down. This was a name that I invested in. I'm no longer there. Very curious how you're thinking about a lot of these Chinese e commerce names. If you think they've found the trough and if we could include China in the theory and thesis that e-commerce outside the U.S. is a tremendous opportunity. And if you're still an investor in that name that he mentioned. Yeah, so so we're we're actually an investor in all three names he mentioned. We're an investor in Coupang <laughs> and Mercado Libre, uh, both of which we like a lot. Um, um, but, you know, PDD, we've had to trade around. You're not letting me in? <laughs> that I just mentioned. I mean, let's telescope out here for a second. Uh, we got GME right here. Our trade, we got GME down here. I got GME. G this is GME right here. We got it up for you. Technology really was not front and center in Washington, D.C. or in Beijing. IWM now pumping to the top. Watch out for a reversal on IWM at uh, the economic Cold War. 208.62. And they're based here in Silicon Valley. Oh. The government has banned NVIDIA. Oh. And now we're going after TikTok, and who knows? So I don't. Oh. It's not all surprising to me that Tim Cook and many others are in Beijing today meeting with Xi. Because the response out of China. Oh, watch! Get out of the way. Watch. Look at our book map. Reactions on Apple in China, or Tesla. Spooz wants to. Uh, U.S. companies in China. I happen to believe. Spooz wants to fucking rip. Things that's pulled the world um, out of poverty and into prosperity. So I'm not celebrating that there's a new Cold War, an economic Cold War, an AI Cold War that's developing. She came here last fall, said, I don't want a hot war. I don't want a cold war. I want a partnership. I hope that with whatever administration is elected this fall, that we can find our way to a tolerable partnership. I agree. We need to have a level playing field. I agree. We should not be allowing people to take U.S. data uh, uh, offshore and use it surreptitiously. Um, but I don't think that means we need to be in the middle of a new cold war with China. Dude, Gerstner, just say I love money. Um, <laughs> And Just say I love money. I don't give a fuck who I have to sell to get it. Company <laughs> that's lost markets. I don't care if they get in bed with. Just say it, dude. A company that has continued to cut prices in large part because of <laughs> lagging EV sales. Gerstner's like trying to like ride the fence. He's like, well, you know, I really want to get rich, as you and I don't give a fuck how I do it. The mega caps, <laughs> if you want to still call it that, year to date. Why did you buy Tesla, Brad? <laughs> um, well, Scott, you, you know, you start with. <laughs> you're, you're, would you listen to him talk? <laughs> on the planet, um, a stock that sold off a lot. Right? And you know, when everybody else is negative about things, like negative on Google, negative on Tesla, that's when we start getting excited. Particularly when they're run by a founder who's as extraordinary. Uh, oh yeah, no, he's rich. He's definitely rich. But there was a second guy. <laughs> a little plug here for my podcast bg2 pod with bill Gurley. we we went into this in depth three or four weeks ago it's never enough agreed la 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 i'm on you i'm with you la 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 it's never enough full self-driving 12 this was their new generation of self come on down to cjj's used car lot come on down say hello moment in fact, I think Michael Dell said something similar. Now the Bears, you know what they're doing, right? Why is that? Because they totally scrapped their. What are the Bears doing here? They're like, this is exactly where I'm going to short right here. To an imitation learning. Bears are like, I'm going to short the fuck out of that right there. Unlike Waymo, which is still a deterministic model, feels like a human driving the car. 
So I think they're making massive progress at an accelerating rate on FSD 12. He's now pushed that out for free to all Tesla owners so that they get to sample, see what it feels like. If a meaningful per, or even just a small percentage of those agree to pay him 200 bucks a month for FSD 12, all of a sudden this goes from razor blades, uh, razors to razor blades, right? Where people are paying for services. Think about that services transition at Apple that occurred in 2015, 2016. And it's the type of thing that other people can't easily copy. <laughs> He's got 5 million robot cars on the road collecting data that's training this imitation model that makes it demonstrably better and almost impossible for all the traditional OEMs. To uh, these are old gym bros up here. China's messy. Good question. Um, you know, we think a lot of the negativity is priced in. We think they uh, hold on. delivery numbers next week. So you got to, you know, this is not for the faint of heart. You have to size it appropriately. You have to be willing to buy more, uh, you know, if the stock goes down. But betting on Elon Musk, particularly in the age of AI, where he is building um, uh, market-leading AI and market-leading <laughs> models around these cars, I think is a bit of a no-brainer. We are going to leave it there. I appreciate you for being so generous with your time with us. We'll talk to you soon. Brad Gerstner, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. If you're a bull, you know what you're look. I'll, I'll tell you what you're looking for if you're a bull. Surratt's made a couple. I'll just draw it out for you right now. We'll detail them next. I can't wait for 5.30. I can't wait to sit on top of the world at 5, 5.30, baby. 5.30. I'll take 5.25 for today, but sitting up there at 5.30, we're going to ask everybody, what? I thought you said we weren't going there. Spoo's now trading 5.20.47. No buy for me. Left me far behind. Very bullish not coming all the way down here. Very bullish. Now trading above the half hour trigger. I guess I should move this up, shouldn't I? It's probably right here is where they're going to short, right there. NBC. All right, we're back. I mentioned we have some committee moves to get through. Surat, I'm coming to you here. I'd say the young Jim Bros are right here. I guess I said they were here, but these are the young Jim Bros. Seven, eight years. Why sell it now? After the last call, Scott, I mean, one of the things that I liked about it was, hey, they're helping companies with AI, and they basically said um, there's no really extra money in people's budgets to do that. 
Um, so they weren't really getting too much of that. And the stock's the 30 times earnings. It's done everything we wanted to do. Um, so kind of looking for other opportunities to put the, the capital to work. So you put some capital into, I mean, Weiss was talking about defense stocks. Yeah. And, uh, and, RTX, right? And you look at Raytheon, yeah, it's up 15% for the year. But year on year, it's flat. Two years, it's down. Uh, 14 times earnings. They're fixing what's going on at Pratt & Whitney. It's a cash flow rich company and secular growth in defense. That's where you want to be. So cheap valuation, restructuring, doing the right things. I think you've got some uh, runway here. All right, I got some breaking news with Kate Rooney. Uh, we'll get back to you in a minute. But Kate, what do you have for us? Hey there, Scott. So Amazon just announcing it will invest another 2 point. Spoo's now AI trading AI above. This comes as it looks for an edge in this new technology race. It follows Amazon. Look closely right here down below billion dollar check this brings amazon's total anthropic investment to gamma flip dollars. amazon had said from the outset oh. that it would invest up to that number this is amazon's largest outside investment ever rivian was the largest before this gamma and flip this is spx down below gamma flip at 522.4 even at four billion dollars scott amazon is still a minority investor they don't have a seat on anthropic's board either Google, we should mention, has also backed Anthropic. Sources tell me that Anthropic was last valued at $18.4 billion. It is widely... I guess you could say that products. old Jim Burroughs are even higher. Artificial intelligence. It's oh, let me look at this really quick. Chatbot Claude competes with OpenAI and... I might be lying to you. Which Microsoft, of course, has backed. Its founders split off from OpenAI. And these partnerships... I, I'm s telling you that the old Jim Burroughs are right there. ...while Amazon eats the AI exposure. They're probably up here. It has said as part of this, it's going to use AWS as its primary cloud provider. It's also going to use Amazon Chips to train and build its AI model. And these guys are likely right here. That. The uh, AI arms race continues. That's our headline from Kate Rooney. Thank you very much for that. So you want to add anything quickly? I mean, you, there can be an argument made that they're here and here. Given where we are in the world, you want to... They were up here, right? Companies that have growth. That they've come down a little bit, so forward earnings is a great place to be. I would say the smart person is probably um, late last week. I think it yeah. was maybe Friday. Well, I'm going to stick with this one. They're right there. there for a minute. And in fact, you've sold it now. Just wanted to update. I'm going to stick with the original call. They're right here now. I do, though, want to talk about the fact that you trimmed some. I'm going to stick with that. That's where they are. So we talk a lot about AI today. Yep. Obviously. So let's go come full circle. Still one here. of my largest positions, but position just keeps growing and growing. You got to cut it back. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's a double-digit size position, um, so it's up there. But um, I think it's going to do quite well. It's just portfolio management. All right on, FX Tracer. No reflection on what the company's opportunities are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's that stuff. FX Tracer saying he's claiming some money here. He's getting bank. Exiting an IWM trade. Here it is down below. He's taking the money and running. Good job. Good job on that trade. I went on a rant last night in a market brief about IWM. Well, you can see that they're not selling the market like they're telling you. You can actually see it in queues. A little bit of underperformance by SPY, but uh, like if you were to just look at, I, I did a, a market brief last night. I, if you on the surface level, if you just look at SPOOs, it looks like crash, right? Or roll or correct, correction happening. Or it, like imminent. If you watch TV and read the newspapers, told the same thing. But if you look at all three indexes as a whole, uh, they're not selling shit. They're just rotating.
insurance. Dude, so <laughs> I'm in the I'm in a right now I'm in a chat with the developers, <laughs> and I'm in like the total box of shame right now. <laughs> I totally fucked up. <laughs> the developers are like trashing me right now. <laughs> Resistance is futile, baby. Closing bell, 3 o'clock Eastern. I hope you'll join me. We've got Morgan Stanley analyst Eric Woodring. He covers Apple. Lots to talk about there. Dan Greenhouse, Chris Harvey, Victoria Fernandez. And how about this? Our friend Ron, Ron Insana. He's now the CEO of iFi AI. He's going to be with us with Rob Thomas of IBM. They've got a partnership. We're going to find out how AI is powering stock research, fundamental and technical signals. It's going to be really interesting. I hope you'll join me for that conversation at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Let's do some final trades here before we get out of here. Steve Weiss, what do you got for us today? I'd be a seller of Tesla. On one hand, you can't say, hey, I've got problems with the CEO of Google. On the other hand, other hand say, hey, I love Elon Musk. There are major, major governance issues there. Yes, he's a brilliant investor, but the governance issues, you just can't get over as a fiduciary, in my opinion. Number one. Number two, the board's still complicit. Number three, you're flooded with EVs. Prices are coming down. You don't want to be a U.S. company in China. So all the headwinds, I'm not a buyer, I'm a seller, I'm short. Okay. Well, you are an investor in the, in the Joe T, TF, which is not short. That's, that's nope. a long, long time. And that, that, I just, that's my hedge against I'm, let, <laughs> I'm letting everybody know. We're on the level. <laughs> that's your hedge. you got a problem. <laughs> Surratt. Uh, Freeport, I think you've got demand increasing and supply going down. All right, this is Stephanie Link, new buy, too, this week. Carrie. Uh, next era, it's utility interest rates going down, positive. All right, thank go you. ahead, go ahead. Money Center Bank, as everyone's talking about city, don't fall asleep on Bank of America. All right, see you on the closing bell. The exchange begins right now. That it does, Scott. Thank you. Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Wilfred Frost, and here's what's ahead. Veteran investor Mark Mobius says India is on top. He's here with where he's seeing the biggest opportunities there and the names you should be buying in India. Plus, AI and the bank's top banking analyst, Mike Mayo, said there's one clear winner. He's here to tell us what it is, what makes it stand out, and why you should be buying it right now. And powering AI will be a massive challenge, but there are four names well-positioned to lead that charge. The analyst behind that call is also here to make that case. 
but we begin with today's markets. Dom Chu, as ever, with the numbers for us. Dom. The numbers are green, Wilfred, and they're green decently so in, in this kind of a tape. So let's take out the Dow Industrials up to 271 points, two-thirds of 1% to 39,554. The broader S&P 500, 5220 the last trade there, up about 17 points, about one-third of 1% there. But if you take a look at the range so far, it has been generally positive. At the lows of the session, we were up about three points up roughly 32 at the highs of the session. So there is your range kind of drifting in the middle of there right now. But the underperformer has been that tech heavier Nasdaq composite currently up about 16 points, one tenth of 1% gain there, 16,332 the last trade. Where there is even more volatility right now is in some of the meme stocks out there, specifically the original one, GameStop. Those shares down 14% off the session lows right now after reporting results uh, yesterday after the close. That came in largely under expectations. They also made a number of unspecified job cuts there. So GameStop down about 15%. Meanwhile, some of the more volatile names that kind of act like the meme stocks, like Trump Media and Technology, the ticker DJT, newly minted public company, up about 17%. So kind of building on some of that momentum that we saw during that first day of trading. Volatile still. Meanwhile, Reddit shares, again, not public very long, down about 11% right now in an otherwise volatile trade. $57.95. And then Tesla is the one that a lot of folks are talking about as a battleground stock in the mega cap technology ish side of things. It's expected they will result, they will report Q1 delivery results next week. Today, a slew of analysts are out with commentary ahead of those reports, including Citigroup, Redburn Atlantic, both analyst teams there cutting their tar target price on Tesla. Meanwhile, Canaccord Genuity is reiterating its buy weighting, so a kind of tug of war developing there. But nonetheless, Tesla shares up 1.5% in today's trade. Wilfred, I'll send things back over to you. Dom, as ever, great stuff. Thanks so much. Uh, well, uh, let's look at the latest CNBC delivering alpha investor survey, which brings together the market intelligence of leading institutional investors, strategists, and our own CNBC contributors. We've asked them for their strategy on overseas markets uh, for the second quarter and beyond. An overwhelming 40% of respondents say they're focused on Japan, while 26% are interested in Europe. Only 4% are looking at China and Latin America. And not on that list is India. But that's where our next guest sees some of the greatest potential for growth. India's Sensex is up 25% over the past year. Here with me. Veteran Emerging Markets uh, Fund Manager Mark Mobius, Chairman of the Mobius Emerging Opportunities Fund. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. So, so big picture on India, first of all. I, you know, I guess everyone knows the attractions broadly of, of the demographics and, and what's slowly but surely being built there. There's also a political question. Narendra Modi's been in charge for a while, elections to come. Do you think he stays in charge? Definitely. I think he'll even strengthen his position in the political landscape. And that's a good thing for, for investors in the economy? I think it'll be a very good thing, because basically what Modi has done is digitize the uh, Indian economy. He, he's moving in the direction of more and more technology. And it's amazing. Some of the things they've done, for example, the central bank in digital currency and that sort of thing, has really moved ahead of many of the developed countries. So uh, you've got a situation with a very young population, very dynamic uh, population, Many, many differences. I like to call it the United States of India because the different states are so different from each other. But a rich cultural heritage and uh, just very exciting times for the country. Is it all about uh, the consumers? Because, as you said, it's a young population. It's a, a growing working age population. Or are there tech names, uh, other sectors that you're attracted to? It's consumers. But more importantly, it's the tech area. As you know, up to now, India has been a leader in software technology. They export software all around the world. Now they're getting into hardware. And I think that's going to be most exciting. Do you, do you think they might clash with the West in the years to come in the way that China has done as it's grown bigger or, or, or not? Do you think they're being a bit more sensible about that? I think it'll be difficult for them to clash uh, with the world because they're a, a real democracy. And you have many, many voices in, the, in a democracy. So it's very difficult for them to take a strong line in one direction and say, look, this is going to be our policy for the whole world. It'll be very difficult for them to do that, which is good for the world. You have a country which is a, a vibrant democracy. Mm -hmm. Before we get on to some of the individual names that you've given us to discuss, just one final question on that, which is that after the recent Russian election, uh, election in, uh, in inverted commas, uh, Modi did publicly congratulate Putin on his win. I mean, there's, there's a short-term benefit, which, yes. you know, India's yeah. obviously 
buying a lot of Russian uh, exports, cheap uh, oil and refining it and making yeah. a huge profit margin. I mean, even that is something you might question in the West, but the public backing of Putin, I mean, I just wonder whether there's, there is a clash to come down the line that the West will get disappointed by India or not. Well, I think one of the things that India has made very clear to the world, they are neutral. They're not going to take one side or the other. So they will congratulate uh, Putin and they'll congratulate the U.S. president, whoever gets in. So they will try to take a, a middle road. And this has been true way back when they had a non-aligned movement. Mm -hmm. You remember, India was a leaning mm -hmm. member of that movement. Let's talk about, uh, we've got three stocks you want to talk about. Tips Industries, talk to me about that. Yeah, Tips Industries is very interesting because they're in the music business. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, Bollywood uh, is song and dance and they're involved in creating this music. So it's a very, very interesting company. And if you've ever seen any of the Bollywood films, you realize it's song and dance in a big way. Uh, and, and, and they're expensive, cheap? Talk us through the sort of... I would alley. say they're cheap. Uh, and by the way, when I say cheap, I don't look at price earnings ratios or price to book or anything like that. I look at return on capital mm -hmm. and growth. And that's why I think they're relatively cheap. I'm going to pronounce this next one wrong, probably. Warare Renewables? Warare Renewables. They are in the uh, tech solar sector. Mm -hmm. They do solar components uh, for solar cells and that sort of thing. So they're, as you know, in India, the entire solar industry will be growing very rapidly as they try to replace uh, solar uh, with the coal with solar. Uh, uh, so I believe that at the end of the day, this will be a fast-growing industry. Okay, and they're fi doing very well. Final pick is uh, NatWet Technology. Yeah, they are doing uh, hardware, and this is why I think uh, it's very, very interesting because I believe, as I said, India is getting more and more involved in computer hardware, and that's what they're involved in in a wide range of hardware components. I mean, so all three of your picks I'd never heard of, I must admit, beforehand. <laughs> what, what about some of the bigger cap names that, that people might have been into and out of over the last decades? You want to avoid those? Uh, no, I, uh, not to avoid. I think it's for, the, for people that have billions to spend, uh, yes, you have to go into the big cap names because mm -hmm. you'd be overwhelmed uh, if you bought these smaller companies. But I believe for people that are looking for long-term growth, you go into the uh, smaller companies that are not in the index necessarily. That doesn't say that these other companies are not good. There's some terrific large companies in India. Um, while we've got you, Mark, I just, just wanted to ask you as well about China. I mean, pretty significant that Xi Jinping, or I should be asking you, how significant was it that Xi Jinping met personally with 20 or so U.S. business leaders th this morning? Are the relations thawing to, to quite a significant scale now or, or still a long way to go? Well, I think the... Uh, China may be taking the wrong path because they are, what they're trying to do is say, look, uh, business is one thing, politics is another. So they're trying to separate that and just appealing to the U.S. business community. But this may be a mistake because it'll be very difficult for the American business community to separate themselves from American politics. Although seemingly they have at the moment. Or, or is that because Biden and Yellen and Raimondo have gone ahead of them and, and things have thawed or you think there's another clash to come? Well, I think there's tremendous pressure on the U.S. administration to do nicer things with China because, well, look at Apple. How much in mm. earnings do they get from China? You're talking billions of dollars. Any of these big companies, uh, you, you name the names, anybody that's in b big in America is going to be big in China. Is China a buy or not? All right, here we go. Uh, sorry about that. I was at a call in a meeting. I apologize. You know, as you know, Let me uh, mute this really quick. Mute that really quick. Okay, so <coughs> you had me down here waiting, right? I'm down here waiting. I'm down here waiting. They come back and back test this. What do you need to know here? There's a few things you need to know or you can see. So they come back down here, right? And what do you see right here? See that green bar? That's a failure right there. See it? That's a failure. So what they're going to do is send it back down now and see if where the buyers are. So this is where they were, right? They're right there. And they're going to check to make sure that these fucking buyers are real or if they're fake. Right? Real buyers, fake buyers, where are they at? And watch them run it down right now. 
and they're going to find out if they're down here or not. As a matter of fact, right here, you do a yellow bar right here. This is a yellow one. This is where the buyers should be. It should have moved up, right, from here to here. Just like, just like I said to you earlier, that the sellers have likely moved down, right? Uh, you likely have buyers right here. Now, do you buy this is the question. And the answer is no. Uh, you want to see. So buyers are saying they're here, right? You want to see. The price action first. You want to see this cross down and up. And you want to see these green bars right here. Bam, 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 bam. You see that right there? They're going to come back down right here. Bam, 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 bam. And I'm going to be standing right there to take that long. Now, this hasn't happened yet, right? So if this doesn't happen, oh, shit, I didn't mean to do that. Now, this hasn't happened yet, right? So... Uh, there's no trade for me here. I, there is a trade. If, like if you're David AMS, you could be like, yeah, I'll take that trade to that trade right there, right? I'm trading a five second chart or something. It's a great trade right there. Bam, bam, bam. It's a great trade. Uh, but uh, as a one minute trader chart, I can't take that trade, can I? Or I can for, I could take that trade. If I did this trade on stream with you, you'd be pissed though. You'd like enter it. You'd be entering it here. And I'd already be long over here, and you'd be I'd be exiting right here as you get rolled down right here. So I don't do this trade anymore with you guys. I used to try, uh, but you guys get all fucked up. So uh, <laughs> I don't take those trades with you on stream anymore. But as a as a regular trader, you can watch for this to develop. Is my point, and take the trade with more confidence uh, on the turn to the upside. Okay, so we'll watch this play out. Uh, and we'll see how this happens and if we get back up there to take the trade up higher. Personally, I'd be buying this, but it's too risky. Like, I, I'm not going to do this shit on stream with you guys. <laughs> so you just, want the, you just want the confidence that the buyers are still here. You want to see us come back above again and make another attempt to the upside. Just delete that now. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if these are real buyers or not. Still, still don't know if they're real or not. They're fake. Hey, short seller, how are you, brother? I apologize, short seller. I'm losing my voice, man. My my voice is getting blown out, dude. Like blown the fuck out. I need like I need this weekend to come faster than I even know. I need like four days of not speaking. <laughs> four or five days. Just shut my mouth. Yeah, no new low. They're they're saying that they're here. So we'll see what's up. Nope. Right there. It's a great trade right there. If you're if you're trading like a five second chart, that's a fucking beautiful trade right there. Bam, gorgeous trade. Yeah, Trader Podcast short sellers here, man. We're trying to get short seller in with us, Trader Podcast. If I can get five minutes, I just I just need five minutes. Trying to get short seller into the community if he's willing. I gotta talk. Yeah, I gotta talk to him. We've been talking in uh, DMs on Twitter. Nothing official, but um, 
We would love to have him be a part of the uh, network. The guy's amazing. One of my favorite people on Twitter. And not only that, but the fact that he puts himself out there on Twitter of all places. <laughs> like, of all places, putting yourself out there on Twitter is like baller. Drawing free charts for people all day long, every day. Then he's got trolls. And you're just like, what are you doing? Why are you trolling this guy on Twitter? Get fucked. <laughs> Hell yeah, may the force be with him. I'm talking about um, people like you know like, people try to do nice things on Twitter, and uh, what happens, what ends up happening is, you do nice things on Twitter, and the trolls come out, and it feel doesn't feel good. That's a human, it's a human emotion, right? You're like, hey, I'm out here trying to help people out, and you've got someone trying to troll you on Twitter, and you're like, why the fuck am I doing this anymore? Everybody feels like that. That's a normal human feeling, right? Smooth squeezing higher now, getting above in one, one and five minute trigger. This looks like real bulls here. Trying to break above the gamma flip, get back into some positive gamma. Smooth now trading 5.2020. Young Jim Bros came in and sold. They're looking scared right now. They're like, oh shit. I was expecting more out of that. And they're watching this 520.53 right now. These guys are like, well, I'm going to have to take my shirt off. <laughs> this algorithm over here, Bob in the basement, he's like, that's not the result that I wanted. <laughs> you guys want to put, bring Hood up? Hold on. I'll do Hood for you. Uh, so we got arm fighting its way back right now. We're going to switch from arm to hood. Robin in the hood. Trading 2030 right now. Bullish. Uh, dips being bought on the, half, on the hourly trigger. I like hood here. Hood trying to trade 25. Nice retracement here. Buyers stepping back in. Still trading like a meme, like a meme stock. As per standard.
Damn it. It's a key moment right here. Young Jim Bros not happy, are they? They're pissed. They're bye bye. See you later. Boom, gone. Next target, right here. Target right here. Five twenty eighty five. Long 521C again. Up to... I don't think I bought that low. I think I got another penny. I think I'm only up one. This is this is what I'm trying to trade right here if you want to know. I didn't quite get what I wanted. I wanted a little bit lower, but I'm not getting left behind this time. They can get they can get fucked. It's, I'll just I'll just ride it. And if we do, if they do have a liquidation breakdown here, I'll just add to it to go up there. Stops are uh, below this line right here. Stops are right here. They're probably going to try to pop the stops right here. Somewhere down there. A gamma flip, sellers trying to defend that gamma flip, keep us in volatility. Hey, what's up, Steve? Point 
apologize I'm not speaking as much. I'm really having a real tough go with my voice. Destroying my fucking vocal cords. I've been, I'm not sick anymore, but it's like still lingering. Trading 25. 26. Come on, baby. Run over these young gym bros, please. Uh, just a note here that ball control crowd comes out and about right now. It's uh, 1.26 in the afternoon. When they do come out, it's about 1. They come out at 10.30 in the morning, 1.30 in the afternoon, and 3.30 in the afternoon. So we'll see if they're here today or not. Three more minutes. Up one penny right now. It's flat. I mean, if you want to give me a discount, you can. I'll take that down here. Come on down. I'll, I'll take it. Send it right down here to me. Throw another fucking 20 on. Do, 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 throw that down here. I dare you. Because I'll buy the fuck out of that. I'll throw another fucking 10 or 20 on there. So just do it. I double, double dog dare you right now to do it. Triple dog dare you. Look at me, I'm over here fucking around with my, uh, I'm over here dicking around with my fucking cursor. I should be paying attention to the fucking trade. <laughs> yeah, you can't double dog and triple dog, do you? And not send it down to you, Cappy. <laughs> They're going to try right now. I assure you of that. <laughs> They're pissy right now. The young gym bros are angry. <laughs> They're on their leg machines right now. <laughs> Trying to catch up with the old gym bros, the big thick legs. You can always tell the difference between a young gym bro and an old gym bro. <laughs> young gym bros look like Chamath. <laughs> he's got skinny, skinny ass legs and he's all built in his chest. <laughs> I've got a big back, <laughs> no legs. <laughs> And you get like old gym bros, they look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, work the whole body. <laughs> yeah, exactly, broccoli heads. <laughs> yeah, do I think that they watch? I know that they do. I've got friends here in the stream that are uh work for hedge funds. We get played in hedge funds. We get we get played in hedge fund offices. People keep us on in the background. Shit, they want to know what retail sentiment is. In total, we reach somewhere probably, we, we guesstimate that we're reaching about 15,000 people a day. Um, between the rebroadcasts, the restreams, we get restreamed in Europe too. And uh, we're about to add Twitter and uh, some, I forget the name of the other one. We're about to add two more streams. Uh, soon, very soon. <laughs> the Jim Bros have stood the test of time and Captain Lore. <laughs> I know, dude. Mr. Talking Monkey, it's like, like everybody's got their own. Uh, everybody's got their own. Every everything or everybody's got their own. Uh, like, like everybody's got like, 
what they call shit, right? You're like Jem out there, like speaking, speaking in a moat sign language. <laughs> Everybody's got their own like thing that they do. <laughs> we, we got Bob in the basement. We got Mary the landscaper. We got our Wall Street cap, our Main Street cap. We got all kinds of stupid shit. <laughs> Can you remember that, Mr. Talking Monkey? I'm like, we're going to be talking about Mary the Landscaper for a little while now. <laughs> She's going to be on our radar for a couple more years. She came out of the COVID trade, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah baby trading 25 right now Woo trading 25 all eyes all the gamma bros are watching this all the gamma girls all the gamma days and the thems Where's Chase? Oh, everybody wants to know. Keep your eyes, too, on this right here, okay? We had a failure of that high. Oh. Let me draw that a little better. It's kind of a, that's kind of a sloppy drawing. Should draw that one first. Might even go as low as that, but that's the trade that I want right there. A very dangerous trade here. A lot of volatility. Up two or three, up three. <laughs> let me uh take off the old man. Let me take off the old man thing over here. Bam, bam. So you guys can see me, know that I'm here, actually here. Make sure you're managing your trades here because it is dangerous. You don't want to get rolled down. I got a sell stop on now. One thirty five in the afternoon. Yeah, I'm watching it here. I don't want it to lose. Um, I'm watching it right here too, uh, John. It's breaking below 77, 76. I don't like that. Flat right now. Still got some premium on these calls.
VIX trading a low of 1293. Tesla holding up okay. Reddit holding up okay. NASDAQ indecisive right now. HYG telling a different story that we're going to get rolled. Up two right now. Let's see if the Vol Control Gang comes out to play or not. See you in a minute there, Mr. Talking Monkey. Triggers are, so triggers don't get weaker. Um, the velocity tells you if the triggers are weak or strong. And on the multi time frames. So um, you can tell if the trigger is strong by velocity on a uh, one minute basis, five minute basis, uh, one hour, half an hour, daily, monthly. You can actually see, you can actually predict the stock market crash with velocity. You can actually see what, like when these people are on, you hear these people on um, CNBC right now, and they're telling you that the market is losing velocity. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> no, the market is not losing velocity. Uh, no matter what they're telling you, I can prove it. Uh, and not only that, uh, if, the, if the market is losing velocity, um, you would see it before it even happened. You can, I can pinpoint it for you. You can see it on weekly and monthly time frames. Uh, you'll actually see a price divergence. They're saying that to you right now, too, because we're expecting a range expansion. And oftentimes when you get range expansion, you will see uh, weekly and monthly velocity top out and start to roll down. Uh, but we're not topped out on weekly and monthly velocity. So they're out of their fucking minds. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they literally don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't talk about that much, but um, they're out of their fucking skulls if they think velocity is, is waning. When you make those statements on CNBC, it better match up with a top in monthly and weekly velocity that's rolling down with a series of new lows and a price divergence and range expansion in the market. If you see those, th those about those three things and you see someone on CNBC saying that, they know what they're talking about. I wonder if I should take the money here and run. Yeah, should I play the bear music? I can do that. They're always fucking late. Look at them. I'm watching CNBC right now. They're always goddamn late to the party. Let's take a look at uh, IWM. Trade is dead. Well, not dead. We got to... Actually got a uh, reversal here on IWM. This is a tweezer candle. Make sure you have stops if you're long on SPY. They're going to try to take your money right now. See the, the two candle reversal in the 30 minute uh, chart right here. I'm about to get stopped out. Not quite yet. Yeah, they're always fucking late to the party. Oh, they're out there talking about small caps right now. Jesus Christ. So sorry for swearing like that. Apologize. <laughs> like, look where small caps is. Now they're talking about small caps, like, right fucking now. <coughs> We're going to find out if, all, if the Vols, if Vol Control Gang is here or not. They may not be. They may be. I can't. I can't catch a read on it right now. I can tell you one thing. They're trying to take my fucking stops right here. Hyg looking pretty weak right now. Vix still getting blooded. I don't like that. It's trading twelve ninety two. 
Vol is expected to grow into tomorrow and then get sold on Monday, if you didn't know. Bunch of bears out there wanting to sell right here on the Gamma Flip. Tesla looking weak once again. Dixie looking weak, though, too, so some mixed signals there. NASDAQ looking weak, dangerous. Reddit blasting right now. It's been the regular place, right? We're in this gamma flip, sell it down, sell it down, trying to do it again, right? It's been like a regular thing for sellers here to be selling us down right on the gamma flip. It's been like a regular thing for bears. They're finally getting some money. Buyers want to be above the gamma flip, so the market becomes supportive for them to buy dips in safety. Bull's been trying to get above the gamma flip now for... Since uh, Monday, the uh, 25th, sellers just come and raining in big boulders down on buyers. One of these days, though, we know it goes up and to the right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any opinions on low volume. No, it's normal. We're in the end of quarter. We're at the end of Q1. Um, you're going to see a lot of volume come in uh, in about a week or next week. On Monday, you should see high volume environments. Uh, when we're in low volume, we have the ability for price to go crazy, actually. You actually have better price movement in low volume environments. And it's actually more bullish normally in low volume environments. Uh, if you're looking for big moves, low volume environments. <coughs> you should see, I mean, you're, you're basically got CTAs or net long, max long right now. Uh, there's a little bit of selling going on by the fall control gang. Uh, we showed that last night in the market brief, right? There's a little bit of selling going on there. Um, and then what you basically have is the market waiting for, you know, people to hedge the market, right? Waiting for the hedges to come out of the market for the next quarter. Uh, there are traders out there, and I'm fucking out. I got stopped. Uh, you've, got, you've, got, um, you've got people waiting, basically, right, um, to put money or not put money into the market uh, for end of quarter. It, everyone wants to see what JPM is going to say, right? Uh, where does the where does the top uh, and bottom of that collar come out? Is it fifty five hundred? Let me ask you that question right now. Let me ask you that. Let me ask you that question. So if the if the collar came out with the top strike at fifty five hundred, right? I already I already I posted my projections uh, a week ago. I think of what I think it's going to be. But let me ask you a question. If the if the top strike came out at 5300, what would you what would you think? Would your sentiment change? If the top strike came out at 5500, what would your what would your sentiment become? Let me ask you that. Um Let me ask you that question. What would your what would your sentiment? Yeah, right. That's what I'm asking you. Is if it came out at fifty three, would you be scared? Nobody's a mod anymore. Uh, we so what happened was we 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 built a a, a bot for our streams to add and remove people 
and we're trying to make people VIPs instead of just moderator. We don't have enough slots. We it's like issues with this bot that we have. Um, and now we're trying to tie in uh, memberships with uh, speaking uh, on Twitter, on Twitch, and YouTube. It's a long story. I can't talk about it right now. But um, basically, uh, we launched. We did a beta launch on our website, and so we're trying to like make sure people can talk um, tied into their membership. It's a long story. I can't do it right now. My voice is about to fucking implode in itself. Yeah, I'm with you on that too, Aces 10. Oh. We've got a bull cluster here. We got a bull and possibly a bear cluster. Should I jump back in again? Oh, I'm back in again. <laughs> I'm back in again. Uh, is it a bear or bull cluster? Bull cluster. Only problem is I want it to squeeze and then back test. That's what I really want to, for it to do. I want it to squeeze above, come back down, and retest the break up with the one five minute and half hour trigger. That's what I really want. Now that is the sustained bull cluster trade. That'll last for like days or weeks. I'm long again, by the way. Move that up right there. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. I apologize. It's very risky here. It's very dangerous. We're in a very dangerous place. I agree with Jimmy on this one. Very dangerous place.
matting right now. They got the new low there. Did you see that? That's not good. I'm going to try to send this all the way down right here is where they're going to try to send it now. I am long. I did add a little bit. I added like 10, like right in here somewhere, like somewhere right there. Still long right now. Now I'm trying to do is get out here. No call premium either. They're not adding any premium here. Be very careful. They're going to try to run this straight down. But I'm not catching any premium on this uh, pull up higher. Still haven't sold. I should, but I'm not gonna. I want a better price. I want like 19 or 20 cents to sell. I'm green right now, by the way. Yeah, there we go. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Turn around, HYG. This candle in particular, I'm watching. I don't want to see a red one. I got. I shouldn't be doing this right now. This next candle is very important here. I do not want to see a red candle here. I want this one. Oh, yeah. Get up there, you fucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Trap these fucking bears. Let's 
Trap these fuckers right in. Rep, tuck them in. Oh. <laughs> I'm so mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a green fucking candle. God damn it. I got a cell stop in. Trap these little fucks in here. Just fucking rip it. <laughs> Still long. Oh, they're trying right now. They're getting close. They're gonna they're gonna knock me out here in just a few seconds. They're gonna send it right down. I needed this fucker to be green right here. This candle right here is dooming me. Bad candle right there. Still long. Oh, I wanted this one to be so green right here. Oh. I wanted that to be a green. I wanted that candle right there to be like, fuck you, right there. Now, if your long calls have stops, they're going to try to roll you down here in just a few seconds. They were like, hey, man, you want to get out with some with a few pennies? I'm like, nah, fuck you. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not taking them. I'm not taking out myself out. I've already done. I already did this once, right? I got stopped out earlier. Pissed off sellers on HYG. Bears just foaming at the mouth right now. You can see it, right? Let's see if you can see it right there. Foaming to roll this thing down. As a matter of fact, let's have a look see. They don't want just that either. They want this right here. Yeah, I'm out. I'm gone. They took my they took my stops right there. I'm flat again. Five nineteen. See, those are only sixteen cents. God damn it. That's it. I ain't fucking telling you about my fucking stops anymore on this fucking show. Fucking cunts. God damn. Fucking fucker. <laughs> God.
God damn it. That's it. Last fucking time. Fucking motherfuckers. God damn it. Not you. Fuck. Son of a bitch. Fucking duh. God damn. Back to I'm like I'm like sitting here going, why am I telling these fucking people? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> So fucking furious right now. <laughs> yeah, 519 P's, they're pretty cheap. <laughs> they're like 15, 16 cents. I'm like, yeah, should I grab some of those? But now I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> fucking took me right at 15. <laughs> Fucking right at fucking 15, then boom, green bar. <laughs> ben, fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, ah! <laughs> God damn. Put it right there. Yeah, it could be a little bit bigger, a little bit higher, like right there. Yeah, it's somewhere in there. It's somewhere in there. Sorry about that. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I think I'm flat now in the day. I, I, I haven't looked yet. I don't want to look. <laughs> I just got I just got taken on fucking five cents. Fuckers. Feels weird with spy saggy and I'd have him looking healthy. Uh I think it looks great. I'm pretty happy with it means we're not going to liquidate means that the money hasn't left the market yet i'm very happy with it hold on one second here give me one quick second i gotta take this call Well, it's not only about high costs, it's also about uh, short supply that is causing so many big tech companies to really focus on building custom chips in-house from Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, or AWS, I should say. Even OpenAI is considering it. And of course, to reduce the reliance on NVIDIA chips. That's why I came to this lab, Annapurna Labs, where you can see everybody's working diligently. Uh, you know, they've been working on their chips for the last 11 years, including the one I'm holding in my hand. This is a, a chip used for inferencing on, on an uh, inferencing board, inf inferentia. And the thing with Amazon is, or AWS, is they're still building all of these chips, working diligently, but at the same time, they need to maintain their partnership with NVIDIA. Listen in.
But it also means bringing the very best Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, whatever the partner might be, to AWS for customer workloads that might need those chips. And so, you know, it's really not just a, a, an approach that says, hey, we want to get everything onto our own silicon. It's really an approach that says you want to give customers the best choice. The best choice and obviously the cheaper alternative because it's always about giving the customers the the, the best of both worlds. The problem Here, is say say what's up. Fierce, not only Nvidia, AMD, etc. Trade and the it's trigger, really y'all. Not Let easy to so. compete. Say it again. That's why labs like this have been around for Trade the trigger, years, eleven <laughs> years. And I say that. <laughs> That's Joey Donut. <laughs> talking about Apple. Apple, for example, there's just, just second, uh, six dude. researchers, roughly from six different universities, yesterday that published a report saying that there are security flaws now in Apple's chips that are used in the out uh, of the M1, the M2, and the M3 used for a lot of MacBooks, uh, and these. Security flaws reveal uh, in encryption keys, secret encryption keys. So that's not a good thing. Another separate story with Apple is that they tried to get their smartphone chip off the ground, but were unable to do so in time. So then they had to sign up with Qualcomm for another three years. Microsoft, for example, they have launched finally after years of production their first, or I should say, set of two AI custom chips in house. And it takes some time. For companies like AWS and all these lovely people around me, they're spending billions of dollars to plan their uh, their future destiny so that it's not as reliant on Nvidia but for now there is a balancing act of being Nvidia customers and competitors guys so Christine in the media industry used to call this being frenemies they have to maintain yes. their relationship they have to buy those chips and also are trying to create um, alternative rival products my question Christina is given what you're seeing there about the variety of chips and also the volume they're able to create when will we see these tech giants be able to create enough of their own chips to not rely on the likes of Nvidia well specifically for AWS they're able to offer these chips to their AWS uh, customers and say okay you can either go the Nvidia route or you can go the AWS route the I guess the strength that NVIDIA has right now is the developer software that's a part of that ecosystem. And often what Jensen Wong, the CEO, will talk about, he'll say, oh, everybody uses CUDA. There's over 4 million developers around the world that are using that software. And so it makes it a little bit more difficult to switch over completely to a competitor. But that's something that all of these big, you know, AWS is known for the cloud, known for all their products. So they are working on it. Uh, and they argue that they can offer it at a cheaper price. So if you're willing to switch away from certain software and then go for the cheaper, maybe more power efficient option, it could be a win for customers, especially when you're thinking of these GPUs that are, you're factoring in costs anywhere between thirty and $50,000 per chip. And that's a chip not including the entire board that has thousands and thousands of pieces and all this intricate, Look at, look at how tiny he's using two or tweezers. I was going to say two tweezers right now. So clearly uh, it requires a lot of effort and skill. So so CEOs and CFOs and boards are paid to make these kinds of decisions. But I can only imagine that the capital expenditures required here for companies like Amazon or Microsoft or Apple to build its own chips, to build their own factories to make those chips or to buy or lease capacity from captive suppliers has got to be vast. Do you have any idea what the capital outlays are when a company wants to do this oh, Tyler, and, and unhitch? I, I asked I asked this question twice and although the AWS team is so helpful and friendly they would not give me an actual amount on how much they're spending per year on uh, on specifically building in-house chips which are then manufactured elsewhere most likely TSMC mm -hmm. but if we're going to give a ballpark figure uh, remember OpenAI and Sam Altman talking about you know localizing it bringing chips into America building there creating a foundation and then he had put a price tag of seven billion dollars obviously billion is quite a bit but that just puts into perspective how much money a lot of these companies have to spend over mm -hmm. years and I say years over 11 years here Microsoft has been working <clears throat> on their chips for also like over five six years on their custom AI chips and yet they've only recently launched them this year meta falls into that category too it's just not easy to do and eventually eventually the money's gonna run out and they're gonna realize okay we either let the chip companies do it or we decide okay we're doing a good enough job or we go and acquire a smaller chip company which was actually the case for this particular lab years yeah. ago. All right, Christina, thanks very much. Christina Parts and Evelis in Austin today. All right, now to our next topic on technology, tech topic TikTok. Uh, Congress seems to want to ban the app or at least force its Chinese owners to sell it. But what do you think? Steve Leisman joins us now with the results of our CNBC All America Economic Survey. Steve. Hey, Tyler, thank you. Nearly half of Americans are concerned enough about the national security threat posed by TikTok to support either banning the social media app 
or forcing its sale. But there are substantial political divides, generational divides, and splits, of course, among those who use the app and those who don't. 20% say it should be banned no matter what. 27% say it should be banned unless sold to a non-Chinese company. So put that together, 47% support a ban or a sale, with a, which is a plurality. 22% say they're unsure. 31% say hands off of my TikTok. Republicans come in 60 to 20 for the ban or for sale. Democrats split 40 to 30 in favor, just slightly in favor, that is. And independents are 34 to 40 against the ban. But those aren't even the biggest splits we picked up here. 31% of all voters say it should be banned, but it's 48% for those 18 to 34, just 11% for the 65 and older crowd. While 20% of non tick Yeah, I want to buy uh, this again right now. Like, I really want to buy this bad, bad. Fear cross above. I really want to buy that. Oh, so bad. Ooh, I really want that. HYG getting stronger. On now. I'm long again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> they only gave a fucking penny, though. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's fucking straight bullshit. I'm long on 521C right now. Am I on? Mic on? Is that over? I want to fuck every one of these bears today. Oh, yeah. Come on and do me right. Oh, oh. Dude, that says I've only have three fucking pennies, though, for all that bullshit. Fucking, what, what is this shit? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Still not enough, though. I'm still down two from the last fucking trade, so it doesn't fucking matter. I'm still down right now. So this isn't good enough. <laughs> I need more. I need more than that. No, I'm, I'm down right now. Well, I'm, not, I'm not down on the day, but I'm down like two pennies right now. I got to stay in. I can't get out. You have a flip right here. On two trades, now flat. I uh, had a, a great trade earlier, made uh, 10 cents. Took a trade from 20 to 30.
same trade over here. I'm going to take the money right about here. I got a sell stop in at 25. Didn't hit. Still long. I need one more penny right now. I'm out. I'm flat. Trading 26, 27. Oh, oh, oh. Give me, come right back down for one more. Come right, but don't go straight up there. Just come back down one more. Let me just slap it one more time. Come back down here. Yeah, right, right there. Just go. Ahead. Don't go. Don't leave me behind. Ooh, we're getting fucking bullish, baby. We're getting big bullish. Oh. Who asked me earlier if we were on a bull a bull cluster or a bear cluster? Who asked that question? Who asked that fucking question earlier? <laughs> You're about to get your asses run over, bears. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Get up there. Up there. Oompa. Oompa, get up there. Just go. I should have stayed fucking long. I should have stayed long. Sorry, I missed. Uh, Jimmy, I didn't see what you said, brother. I apologize. Jimmy, say it again. I missed you. whatever you said, brother. you just wrote Jimmy you want me to, you want me to start trading SPX instead I can trade I'm gonna trade SPX with you instead bulls you might get one more shot at this they well, just ram it home right now is the old Jim Bros. Where are we at right now, boys and girls? We're in positive gamma. What do they do when we're in positive gamma? Dip buying is supportive, baby. shitting themselves right now. I don't even want to look and see what they're fucking trading at right now. Ah! <laughs> they're trading 34 fucking 
fucking sense right now. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> fucking fuck. <laughs> I took 25. <laughs> come on baby let's jump back on the train come on down just come on down i don't like positive gamma you leave me behind <laughs> Fuck. watch that big red bar up there on book map We positive, baby. Now, here's the thing I got to tell you. I got to warn you of something. I got to warn you of something. Oh, not a warning. Hang tight here. All right. Let's go over to the trigger full screen. We got all this to erase up here, right? We'll bring this over. Uh, I'm going to delete a bunch of this shit, but mostly because I want to show you something. So I'm going to get rid of this gamma flip. You know where, you, you know where the, where, uh, positive gamma is, right? I'm going to, this is all shit about the bears and all that stuff. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. But truly what I want you to see or know here is get rid of that. You can get rid of that for now. Now what's important here is this. Uh, this is the lesson here that I need to teach you or show you, okay? I don't ever like squeezes off the hourly trigger. Uh, now, we're in positive gamma here, right? I still don't like them. I never do. I don't like the straight up off, off of the hourly trigger, nor a cluster. Uh, I'm very skeptical of it when it happens, and statistically, it's not a good sign. What I really like to see here, now let's say we do squeeze higher. I'm more interested in, does the hourly trigger hold? And do we make a new high? Uh, whatever that pullback is, is the best trade. So still a lot of work to be done by bulls. My point being is no matter where this is, I don't care where this goes. I mean, I do care. Um, I care that it goes above, believe it or not, right here. But my point stands that, um, like, I, I want to see price right now get right here. This is where I want to see price go, specifically to 521. So right where we are right now, I want to see price peak up. Matter of fact, that's exactly where I want to see price. You want an exact, I'll give you an exact place I want to see price. Right there. That's really where I want to see it. But that point, point doesn't matter, though. What really matters is, um, do we come down, make a new high, and then come back down and then take the trade? Because what this does is it sets up, uh, what that, this trade does is it sets up um, bullishness for, you know, one, two, three days, five days to the upside. 
So we'll monitor it. It's and my point here is that we're not bullish yet. Like don't count your eggs in a basket yet. Because what can happen is we squeeze woof, and then wham right back down underneath. And it's just a liquidity grab. So just we'll monitor it. It's not completely bullish yet. Uh, you want some confirmation that it is bullish and that these buyers are real and it's not just a squeeze. Just be conscious of it um, as we trade this. If you want to know, if you're, if you're looking for the next dip buy on this, it is... Um, Like somewhere like that right there. See if we can jump on board, pick one more trade here. I want to be a buyer again down here somewhere, right down there. Uh, you should have an you should have an afternoon update from me already today on IWM on the website. There should be an update. If there isn't, I'll get one to you right now. You not do you not have an update on the website on IWM? Charles, do you have an update on the website or no? Let me check right now. Uh, I just texted. I just texted to find out if it was if it was put up or not. So, uh, if it's not up there, there'll be one. I just requested for the update to be put up there for supporter and pro trader. Uh, so if it's not there, it should be there. But if it's not, I'll have one up there in the next five minutes, ten minutes. Nice. Are they going to leave me behind here? Come on back down and say hello to me. Don't leave me behind. Please don't go straight up there and trade 522. I'm going to be fucking pissed, man. If they go straight up to 522, the fuck do those calls? Those calls are now 41 cents. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> come on down come on down come say hi <laughs> definitely wagyu time 
<laughs> Come on down. Just turn around. How about, how about give me a flush? Like, nah, dude, we're in positive gamma. We don't flush shit. <laughs> give me a quick flush. Somebody somebody hit the toilet. Somebody flush the toilet for me. <laughs> Just give me a quick flush. <laughs> it stinks in here, man. Somebody light a li somebody light a match. Jiggle the handle. Yeah, I, I want to. I just want a quick flush. Just a quick flush. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh! Come on down, come on down, come on down to my call lot. Come on down, come on down. Back check. Bulls. You are looking at a back check on a four trigger bull cluster right now. One, two, three, four. If this is a successful back test, um, you will see a fucking huge move. I'm going to get rid of this so you can see it better. I'm going to get rid of that so you can see it better. I'm going to move that back a little bit. We don't need that anymore. The only thing you need to know here, not only thing, but right here. This is the only thing that matters if you're a bull. Only thing that matters right now for a bull. If you can get a new high. That's it. Just a new high. That's all you need. Well, this trade is going to moon way up there. Like fucking moon. So pay attention to this right now. Like it'll, it'll fucking moon. The trade for you to take or the two entries for you is right now, right here. Not financial advice. And right there. Stops underneath. And do you see on book map how there's a, see that big orange bar down there? Like right here. See that big orange bar right there? So here I am, right? I'm going to show you exactly where I am. If I can get this tag down here, wham. And watch right here. That's where I am, right there. Uh, 521, huh? My mistress. 521, my mistress. She's like, I'm right here. 
Been here all day long, getting abused. <laughs> up, down, up, down, up, down. My mistress today, 521. <laughs> Here, I'll even I'll even bring it right down to you right there. <laughs> give her the give her the OI in and out, in and out. <laughs> I'm going to give her a little bit of premium, take a little bit of premium away, give her a little bit of OI, take a little bit of OI away. <laughs> Sit down, Lala. <laughs> Turkey McNugget, you too. Bunch of fucking bears. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see them out there. I see Lala and Turkey McNugget. They're out there like, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Time to start selling. <laughs> oh, did you guys see that they got Diddy's uh, drug mule? <laughs> did you see him? I was like, I was like, yeah, that guy definitely looks like a drug mule. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just fucking with you guys. Uh, Turkey McNugget, Lala, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, no, no, Lala. No, 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 no. I was talking to la 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 four twenty sixty nine. What up, Flama? Oh, come on. Just do it for me. Here, I'll make a better V for you. 239. Vault Control Gang. <laughs> Vault Control Gang did show up today again. How you doing, Flama? Good to see you, brother. Uh, is the bus getting parked? I'll say this. like, um, If, the, if they're going to come back out to play again, they like to play around 3.30. Uh, right now it's 2.40. Eh, bears are like, yeah, it's 2.40. It's our time to rock and roll. We get the next hour's hours. Like 2.30 to 3.30? Fucking bear, dude. Fucking bears, man. Fucking bears want to come in and rain terror down on the bulls, make us all cry and wet our pants. <laughs> <laughs> Diddy's going to self-diddle with NVIDIA. I saw his, uh, I saw his uh, quote unquote drug mule. Did you, any of you guys read the shit about the, some of the, like the um, court case? Woof. Damn. Oh, no way. We we posted uh, a wheat. Didn't we post the wheat trade inside the, the Discord too, right? Did you guys see the uh, the wheat uh, chart? I think we posted a wheat chart in uh, the commodities channel. Oh, yeah, dude. 50 Cent is, dude, 50 Cent is out there trolling hard right now. <laughs> Set is out there trolling hard right now. I'm not, I'll be honest, I don't like Diddy. Uh, I, I'm a part of the generation that watched um, Biggie Smalls and uh, Tupac uh, get murdered, and that uh, that always rubbed me wrong. 
And back when I was young, everyone said it was um, everyone said it was P Diddy that did it. So he was the one that actually fucking did it. So I've never liked him. I never liked the song that he played. Uh, the song that he made, uh, I'll, I'll, like, well, I'll remember you and all that kind of shit. Yeah, dude, that was crazy shit, too. That's a, that's an even bigger point, Shaq. That's an even bigger point. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely, brother. And who else? You, I thought, uh, what's, who's the other guy? Um, who's the producer? He was probably wrapped up in it too, right? He's, he's in prison right now, isn't he? Who is the producer? I forget his name right now off the top of my head. Yeah, Suge Knight. Suge Knight, exactly. Yeah, it's Suge Knight. fucking bears raiding right now it's... west coast best coast uh so uh that's a hard one man well i would say maybe the west coast best coast right now for music but like back in the day dude liquid swords wu-tang Come on. I can, I can, like, De La Soul, I can list off probably 30 or 40 bangers. Ghetto Boys, well, they're, well, they're, well, uh, Florida used to have some good music, too. Um, I should just say that whole era is some of the best music of all time, right? That whole era, both, both coasts. Hard not to like that music. Tribe Called Quest, yeah. Ghetto Boys, Too Short. I I partied with um uh uh Two Live Crew. I partied with them. I, do you want to tell you a, a true story? A true story. A true fucking story. I was uh I was in downtown Vale, and I was all I was partying, and I went to the uh, I think it was Store 24 over in Westvale and sh by Chamonix. And I walked into that store to get a drink or something. And uh, a limousine pulled up. And it was them. <laughs> and my buddy, my buddy had... Uh... <laughs> no, no, I've never partied with Diddy. Never did. I had a party with um, two live. Is it two live crew? Luther. This guy's name was Luther. Uh, Luther something. I forget. Luke Skywalker. Something like that. Uh, but he was. They were. They were uh, playing in Vale. So, I'm outside. My buddy's with me. But buddy smokes weed. So uh, he smoked up those guys, and uh, then they came to a party with us uh, up on Chamonix. We went to a party that came up with us and partied with us all night long. It was fucking awesome. This was years ago. This was um, fuck, a couple decades ago. Yeah, that's a true story. <laughs> I could probably get the guy on the phone right now that was with me. <laughs> I don't know if he's working right now. Let me see if, he, let me see if he'll take a call. <laughs> I will. I'll, t I'll ask him right now. The guy that was with me, I'm still friends with him to this day. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if we'll take a call. Let me see if he even answers. Let's see if he answers the phone. <laughs> yeah, Luke Campbell. That, that's his name, I think, Luke Campbell. They were really straight-up guys. Uh, so they were really normal people. Uh, super fucking cool. Uh, they were just normal guys. But I mean, they still had, like, the swagger and all that shit. Uh, but they were just normal. They they had no like they weren't pretentious or anything. You had Tupac's baby. Well, Tupac was like um. 
Tupac was a was a was a kinky man, right? He was he was he was like he was in a lot of kinky shit, right? Tupac was like playboy. A lot of stories about him. I think they were all into it. I think they were doing stuff like, um, I think they were doing like uh, sex parties with like boys and girls. That's what I had always heard. I always heard like the rumors and shit. Yeah, yeah. Come on down here. Come on down here and just, just like, give me a liquidation break right here. They do, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of, there were a lot of whispers about, there's this like whole thing too. There's like a, um, I don't know. I want to talk about this stuff on stream. Some things I want to say that I can't. Or things that I've read. There's always been whispers about the rap industry. And um, it's not what you think it is, right? Come on down here. Just give me a break. Right down here. I see the I see it down below. It's right there. You can see it right there. See it right there? Right, it's right there. Right there. There it is, right there. I love the boondocks. It's one of my favorite all-time shows. And I live in Detroit, so. Uh, Detroit is very much like the boondocks. <laughs> Detroit is like very similar. There's an Uncle Ruckus. Like every, everybody has an Uncle Ruckus here. <laughs> I'm not long right now. Yeah, I'm not telling you where my cell stops are, but I want to buy right here. So, but I'm not telling... So I'm not telling you anything about my cell stops anymore today. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Dude, sometimes I'll leave the show and I, I'll call Joe Donut up and I just start screaming. I'm like, I'm like, they're fucking watching the show. I'm like, I'm fucking done. I'm not telling anybody anymore. I'm like, I'm fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's you like you say like you say that you don't have um or I, so what I used to hear was this people would say people would say um stock market participants are very um what's it called when you're um uh they believe in uh what is it like um what is it called when you like believe in stuff like um bad luck or superstitious exactly exactly superstitious so um and i was like what do you mean superstitious they're not superstitious years later i'm totally superstitious i'm like they're fucking watching my i used to buy like large blocks of zero dates and shit i'd spend like five grand 20 grand 30 grand and i'm like they're fucking these fucking brokers know i'm like they're tr fucking trying to take my money like now they're order blocking me in larger blocks of trades or putting us all together, cutting me up for fucking three cents, right? Then they make me stay in the fucking trade, and they never did that when... Then right now, I only trade small um, small trades now. I don't do big blocks anymore because of it. <laughs> I'm totally superstitious now. I have all kinds of fucking stories that I'm like, I know this shit might not be true, but it might just be true. <laughs> Paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> but i'm guilty of it i am guilty of it <laughs> watch out on this trap right here watch out for that trap right here see it a little bit of trap here for the bulls watch out for a break right now bring that one over there
<laughs> Look at that IWM smashing through the next green bar. Yay. IWM now looking for 20886. I'm going to make this one uh re oh yeah, this one's yellow for sure. I don't know why I made that green. That one needs to be turned to yellow right there. Come on back, IWM. Whoa. There's IWM for you. As long as we stay above the one-minute trigger on IWM, trade is not dead, though it does look like it's a little long in the tooth. If you're looking for a rebuy on IWM, your rebuy is at 206.66. Also note... Also note on this, uh, this is IWM right here. Where's my camera, man? There we go. Also note here in IWM, well, number one, uh, you're long above the one minute trigger, right? You know that. Uh, but also, if you're, I want you to notice though something here. Whoop, damn it. Uh, see how I see how the hourly trigger is flattening a little bit here. See how it's flattening. There's likely a roll coming in IWM. If you're looking for a place to buy the dip, it's somewhere in here. So uh, that is at 207.11 and 206.66, right in here. By the time it rolls, uh, it'll likely look something like this. There's going to be some kind of roll upcoming in IWM, and you want to be grabbing it down in here. 206, 207, somewhere in there. Now trading on IWM, uh, 208, 48. Probably some rotation going on right now, too. Now, that doesn't mean we can't blast up and tag the 209, 22, or whatever. Uh, but just note, just note it's a little, this, this run right here is a little long in the tooth. So look, look to be buying down below here. Sorry about that. Hold on here. Sorry about that. Apologize for the uh, screw up. I hit the wrong buttons. There could be like a rotation out of IWM and into tech and into S uh, SPY. Not necessarily bared up or anything, but there could be a rotation coming. You want a little bit of bear music? I can get some bear music. There's a rotation going on right now of some kind. Oh, yeah, bears. Oh, yeah. Glad I'm not long right now. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Is that what you're looking for? Is that what you want? You want bulls tears up here? Oh. Ooh. 
pool of blood. blood what makes the green grass grow <laughs> uh yeah so i'm using um i'm paying for an ai music service right now but i hate it it sucks that's right bright red bright red blood makes the green grass grow you know it well some of you guys know what makes green grass grow Hold on one second here. Hang tight a second. I got to answer a question really quick. Hold on. Can I just get like a rejection here? Just give me like a quick rejection. Take it down there so I can go up there. <clears throat> I want I didn't buy this, by the way. I did not buy this. I guess I want to buy here. Hope I don't get left behind.
Ah, oh, fuck. They're going to leave me behind. God damn it. Yeah, they're going to moon the fuck out of this right now. They're going to leave us the fuck behind. I think I'm going to get left behind here. They're not going to do me like they're, they're not going to. Uh, I'm, hope, I'm hoping fucking just fucking roll it. God, fuck. <laughs> roll this down. Please roll it down. Please, please, please roll it down. Roll it down. Roll it down. Don't leave me behind. Come on. Don't leave me behind. I just, I just want one sweet, sexy, like, I'm just so greedy. It's so fucking greedy. Come on. Three oh eight power hour or sour hour. I think we're getting power hour here. Oh, yeah. Come on down. Come on down, baby. Come on down. Come on down to Jim James used call lot. Come on down there, baby. Come to daddy. Come on down there. Yeah. Yeah. Come on down. Come on down. Don't leave me behind. I'm right here. Come on down there. Come on. I'm probably going to switch to one dates for tomorrow. Come on down, say hello. Come on down here, say hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on down. I'm right here. I'm waiting for you. Come on down, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. No, 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 no. Come back. Come back. A little bit more. I'm right here, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on down there. A little bit more. Just a, here you go. Oh, 
Hold on. I'm, I'm hold on a second here. Hold on. Oh yeah. And dude, look at look at the IW look at the IWM bears. They're like, oh yeah, we're gonna short this shit down to the dumpster too. <laughs> Come on down. Oh, yeah, come on down. We ain't done going down. Keep on going. <laughs> Someone, does anybody know how to spell the sound chickens make? <laughs> Uh, let's look at where that gap is. Uh, they might want to fill that gap. Who said that? Whoever said that, thanks for saying that. Let's look at it. Here, let's... Dude, this looks like disaster. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Clean it all up. Let's look at the gap from this... Oh. You mean that one right there? We had this one charted out earlier. You're talking about that gap right there, aren't you? That's sexy bad boy. Ooh. That would be nice. I would be down for the, oh no, is it this gap? This gap is closed. They closed all this gap right here. There's a little more though right there, isn't there? Let's have a peek. A little more gap. Oh yeah. Oh, they haven't closed this, this, eh, we'll give you that much. Most of this was all closed. There's a little bit. I mean, depending upon how you're counting. Could they be trying to close this down here? Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to that. You already did that one right there, so that would be the next logical stop, right? And you're basically saying something like this, right? Up, down, close the gap. I don't know if they need to close this. You'd say right about there, right? One, two, three, boom. One, two, there. Take that one out first. So I'm trying to look at this this stuff back here. That's possible. It's possible. Is that what you're thinking right there? Let me know. Is that is that what you're thinking right there? Who who asked that question? I don't know who is asking that question. Uh, will they do the, the end of the day dip? Um. You know, you could make an argument. You could make, what time are we up here? 
930. You could make an uh, argument that there's a failure to launch here. You know, the bulls really did need to be up here. And if we're going to come back down here, do we recheck the bottom down here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely possible. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how deep it goes. I mean, I'm assuming that so that's what you're thinking, right? You got the four trigger cluster. You, the hourly trigger did not hold. The back test is not successful at this point. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave this up. Let's leave this up together. I'm down with that trade. Let's see what's going on with uh, Bookmap. Uh, thanks, Burned Pirate. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for asking the question. Fake dip, uh, $15 gamma, or no, 515 gamma opened up, so that's why I think it goes low. You're thinking fake dip to get everyone thinking, five straight in a day dips, and then kill the bears, and then sell overnight, just taking. Mm, let's have a look at, um, let's look at book map really quick. So, I mean, this is kind of like don't fuck around zone, right? And this is what you're talking about here is this stuff. I mean, they're, they're down here. Oh, there it is right there. There it is. Five, uh, two, or five, two, five, two, fifty. That's where the real buyers are, at least. They're right here. So you kind of want to be long up here, right? But you don't want to be long in here fucking around with this shit. You're definitely looking for this. And so... There, let me show you where that is. That's this green, or th that's this yellow box right here. Nope, nope, nope. I got that wrong. That's this box right here. We're right on it right now. Let's go back and look at the uh, book map again. Yeah, we're coming into it right now. Yeah, I think we can get down there. Well, you got the trigger cross right now to go down here, so it's possible. Bookmap saying that you've got supply down below. You can see it right down there. See it right down there. There is a concern here too. Look at um, look at uh, IWM, and they're trying to roll this fucker right now. Uh, this is a thirty-minute chart in IWM. Uh, let's go to a one-hour view. See it here. Um, remember we're trading a one minute here, so. You know, like in the in the chart on the right hand side, that's like a half a fucking tick, right? Um, IWM still looks strong in the one hour. On the four hour, this is the new four hour right here, but um, you're gonna be buying right about here, two oh seven. Mm. <laughs> 207.58. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Did we just lose it? I would say that uh, depending upon your time frame, this is actually going to be up here. And see the, see the testing going on right now? They're testing it right now.
Here comes uh, 52, 72, 74 major retest, at least four failed attempts on the day. Cap, can I do the cues? I thought we were mooning. Buying the dip here. Uh, no, I wouldn't buy this dip yet. Not quite yet. Not quite yet. I would not be buying a dip here personally. But I would set up a trade here. Just not quite yet. Uh. All right, so March 28th calls. Let's see what we can see on March 28th. I got a fuck ton of it. I'm going to add a fuck ton more. We have I'm I'm ready to ride. Hold on a second here. I'll ride with you. I got an order in. I got an order in. I just want one more penny. See if they give me one more penny. I'll I'll I'm, I'll be in with you. Hood testing its uh hood is testing its hourly trigger right now in nineteen seventy eight. You don't want to see hood lose nineteen seventy eight. Begin to reject it. Nope, I'm getting left behind. Hold on. Trading right now, 525s for tomorrow. 525s for tomorrow. <laughs> Turkey McNugget. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> I fucking love you guys. <laughs> Vol control in the house, baby. Don't be trading zero dates today. There's no point. Now, there's a point to be made here. Uh, they're parking the bus for tomorrow, right? Let's think about that. Uh, did I say that already? Uh, tomorrow is the, tomorrow is the uh, last day of the quarter. Uh, we we're gonna have some special guests on. We're trying to get uh, Vol signals on the show. T t I thought we were trying to get him on today, but I don't know if you could get him on today. But uh, I would like to have him on tomorrow if that's possible. Uh, I think Binky is gonna try to come on the show tomorrow to talk about the uh, JHQ, uh, the um, JPM caller for tomorrow. Uh, but it's a big day, right? We want to see what the hedges come out. Uh, Trader podcast. What did you come up with the math on the? Um, on the uh, collar for tomorrow. You got it. That's your. There goes your check back. You guys know what a check back is. Jaime, you want to get Jaime on the show? You know, I bet he would. He would be a blast. I bet he would be fun. I bet. I actually like Jamie Diamond. I actually, I actually like him. Um, he's one of my favorite guys out there. I like Mike Wilson too. 
Um, I actually like him too. Can't say don't don't like those guys. Uh, get Mr. J roll on. You know what I just talked to? Um, you know I just talked to was uh, Gavin uh, last week briefly. Uh, I'd love to have those guys on the show again. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. All right. But uh, 4960 put, sold put, 4185. Uh, sold call, 5525. That's where I am, too. Uh, no, I'm at, um, I don't think I'm on the 418s. I think I'm on the 430s. And I got like, um, I got 555.20, I think, or 550.05 or something like that. But that's what I had. Uh, a couple weeks. I'm pretty close to what you've got for the uh, puts and calls. Are you guys trading calls with me right now? Because they're going up. <laughs> Let me know if you're on calls with me right now in the chat. <laughs> Three hour look back. Four trigger cluster. Cluster is bullish. Told you that earlier. Now trading 520.83. Can you hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. Long calls here. the stream please tell me we're not losing the stream this for um, a, a good a guy, a guy, he's not a friend anymore I don't talk to him I, used, I should talk to him again I just don't I just don't see him uh, a guy that I really look up to Derek Kotnoy this. this is for him I'm the papa this.
Thank you for showing up to the stock market show every day. I want you to know that I'll be there for you all day tomorrow, too. I will help guide you through the rest of this quarter. I love you all. is higher. Crazy, crazy Eddie knows. <laughs> crazy Eddie knows exactly what happens. I see that Tesla cluster. I see that Tesla cluster. I'm watching it too. Steady as she goes, baby. A little bit of rotation going on back in a spooze.
keep it. thumbnail on today's video. Jim James, burr, baby, burr. I'm getting on Twitter right now. I'll say I'll follow any of you out there. If you need a follow, let me know. Boom. Just John, baby. Posts. If you if you mention me right now, I'm just reposting your shit. Let everybody see your posts. <laughs> look, look at fuck.
Bob's book map broken. Taking me higher than I've ever been. Cruising, what up? I'm holding it back, just one shot of give me more. What up, Jade Pastor? I see you out there. You let my heart escape beyond the meaning. Don't even act, can't find a way to stop. H bomb. Oh, baby, it's out of my control. It's going on. But you Frankie for <laughs> watch out for a reversal right around here oh fuck yeah Take a picture of this one. I'm oh my fucking god. But you're just a hideaway. You're just a feeling. You let my heart escape beyond the meaning. I can find. Oh yeah, baby. Oh baby. Oh, what's that up there? What? What's that? You're just a chance I take. Watch this bar right here, okay? Just another day. That's roughly right here. You want to hold this right here. See that yellow white line coming up right there? Marsh. Twelve minutes left.
Hell yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> now we know two days. <laughs> Turkey, I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you, Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> let's get weird take it easy take it easy Leith. let's get weird okay so do you guys want a quick brief on what to expect tomorrow do you want a little quick brief on what to expect tomorrow let's take a look just a quick quickie before the end of the day so you can have a feeling of what's going to happen tomorrow let's look at a few things here We know some stuff, don't we? Where's local resistance? Write this down, please. Where's local resistance? 5250. 5250, right? 5250. What can happen as we go there right now? We're going up there right now. You see it? See us blasting up there. What do the bulls want to do? They want to get above it and hold it. That's what they want. Get above it and hold it. What do the bears want to do? Sell it. So we get pretty dangerous as we go up there right now, right? So what is happening right now? Where are we? We're at PT2, aren't we? Where's PT3? Right here. Next target. Five twenty three ninety seven. What do bulls want to do up here? They want to smash this and hold it, even if we drop back down. Why? Why? Why do bulls want to do that? Do you know why? Why do they want to get up here? Why do they want to get above this? Even though this is local resistance, why? For a bunch of reasons. Look, this is the gamma flip. The bulls want to get up and over local resistance to do what? 525, right? To convincingly own the market to trade what? What do they want to be trading? They want to park that shit up here so that we can trade this right here. Well, more than likely just this. So if you don't think we're going up, you think we're gonna sell this on this local resistance, that's possible. But I'll tell you what, we back checked that hourly trigger, didn't we? And we squoze up, why? Because guess what happened all week long? Guess what happened? Some of you know, I think Career, Career Low probably knows, Trader Podcast probably knows. Uh, there's a few, a few of you out there that watch the call and put flow because we have expanded <coughs> calls to the upside. <coughs> Where have we expanded that, those calls? Where? 530. 5300. Even though the market was showing flashing bearishness and volatility, the call or the expansion in calls and puts this week was on calls. They were buying the fuck out of calls. Buying the fuck out of them. Buying them, buying them, buying them, buying them, buying them, buying them, buying them. All that bearishness out there. That's where we're going right there. We're going there. And we're going to hold that. We're going to fail five, 
524. We will fail 524, but we are then going to come back up and trade 530. We're actually going to fail this right here and come oh, and come back. But when we fail this, we're going to fail like 525. And then we're going to rip up and trade what? 5 fucking 30. So, outlook right now, trading just below 525, a pullback, and then we're going to attack five, uh, we're going to attack what, five, <laughs> 530, we'll fail it, we'll likely fail, um, we're likely going to fail at like 528, 529, something like that. I'm bullish. Not only am I bullish, I'm bullish tomorrow, I'm bullish on Monday, send it to 530. There'll be ups and downs, it's going to be straight, but it's going to be pretty fucking close to straight. <laughs> straight as you can be in the next week. Bullish. <laughs> What do I say to you in the market briefs? We are buyers of dips. We are not sellers of rips yet. Buyers of dips. Three fifty six, four minutes left. Yeah, I feel bad for the foot right now. Uh, I'm I'm very close friends with, or I should say, I really like him a lot, and I'm sad that he's that bit as bearish as he is right now. Yeah, I've got a bunch of crap. Uh, I still have a bunch of crap. I got a whole. I got to leave on. Uh, not only that, I've got a a put hedge that's going to fucking go to zero. I got a put hedge, dude, that expires tomorrow. And if we get above 525, I make nothing. I make zero. I got a massive, uh, pr well, I've made good money since then, but I have a massive, like, $10,000 uh, put hedge. It's supposed to be paying me, like, seven grand or something. I don't know if I'm going to get that money. Uh, what I like a little bit of the, some red, um, that's right. We are buyers of dips. We are buyers of dips. All dips are supportive right now too. We are in positive gamma. Well, I, I hope we don't get above 525 by tomorrow. I'll be honest. <laughs> but I think we are. Oh, I think we're going to fail at like 524 or 95 or 80 or something like that. We should fail this up here. I hope that we do. <laughs> I need to be like between anywhere between 525 and 5000 and I make some money. Anything above 5 anything above fucking 525 and I'm going to lose that trade. <laughs> I got like a whole fucking I got dude, I got a whole bunch of shit. I got like I got real good foods. <laughs> Fucking bag holder on that shit. <laughs> oh, you ready for this? I thought I had a Tesla trade into the 28th or some shit. 
It fucking died on the 15th. Lost a shit ton of money on that trade. Fucking. <laughs> lost a fuck ton of money there. Um, what else? Now, hey, happy end of quarter. Happy end of quarter to all of you. Thanks for sticking around for the entire quarter. Uh, I want to say a special thanks to our community. I said it in the market brief last night, and I want to reinforce it today. It's the end of the quarter. You are the reason that we are making the jump, that we're becoming a more sustainable community. You're making the jump with us, and I really appreciate that. You've stuck around here for three years. Uh, I really do appreciate that. I love all of you out there. Uh, our team, our entire team wants to thank you uh, as well. Uh, Joe Donut and I and Bork were talking last night, and uh, and we were talking about, last night we were having a discussion about, like, um, John L. We were having a discussion about uh, Trader Podcast and uh, David AMS and just like Career Low, Blind Nest Owl. Like these people have been there since day fucking one. These these people are break break their balls day in day out, and uh, all due to you guys showing up every day. You know, all due to you guys showing up every day. So I just want to say thank you. Q1 is in the bag as of tomorrow. And uh, stick around. Stick around. Join us. Uh, we've got a kick-ass Discord. We've got a bunch of cool fucking bots in there. We're posting shit in, like, the Commodities Channel. We're posting shit in uh, crypto channels. We're posting stuff in uh, stock chart. Like, your favorite stock charts, you can post that shit. we got a general chat that's fucking crazy. <laughs> it gets wild in there right now. Career Low. What up, my brother? Uh, so, uh, dude, I'm so, uh, dude, get in there. Get in there, Nino. FX Retrace, what's up, my man? What up, Addy? What's going on, Addy? Now, 401, and what are we doing? Blasting fucking off to PT3. Get in the Discord, Nino. Get in the Discord. Get in the Discord. Where are you? I don't see you in there. Are you talking to people? I got to hang out with you, Nino. I'm going to find you today in the Discord. I got to find you. I'm going to drag you over to meet John. I'm going to drag you in there. We're going to we're going to go we're going to bring you to the torture chamber. <laughs> <laughs> and look where we are to the close right here, right? Local resistance, right? You see it? We need to jump above this local resistance and hold it to trade 530. They're going to try to do it right now in the after hours. So the old music, a bunch of it I can't use anymore. The licensing went away on it. Uh, so I have to get new mu the music situate. If, how about this? Does anybody want to help work on music? Uh, at me in the Discord. I'm having a, I'm having a rough go with the music right now. Crazy Eddie, baby! Woo! Woohoo! If you are long here, do me a solid. Take the money and run at four fifteen. You got another 12 minutes left. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I got 12 minutes left. All right, I'm going to see all of you guys tomorrow. Oh, dude, you're Calmath? I didn't know that. You've been there since forever, dude. I know who you are. I didn't know that was you, dude. Dude, Calamath, I know you. I know you, dude. <laughs> I'll give you a shout again tonight, dude. We'll talk. We'll chat tonight. All right. Happy quarter. I love all of you. I will see you all tomorrow, 9 a.m. I will be here for you tomorrow. 
all day long. I love all of you. Happy quarter. Happy Q1. You guys all take it easy. I'll see all of you guys tomorrow. John Dickus, man, take it easy, brother. Good to see you here. Andreak, take it easy. Captain Shonsky, Johnny Five, baby, what are you doing? What up, Johnny Five? Turkey McNugget, zero date hero. Have a good day. I'll see you all tomorrow.